They made a liar out of me. They said they would never block him one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> well, it helps when he kind of takes himself out of it a little bit. Is he a man? He really is. Second and five. Lined up right over the nose this year. Wants it a spinner, cannot. Yes, he does battle for an extra half yard. Close to the 40-yard line. Big Luther, number 83. Here's a young man who was married during the offseason. Grew up on the western side of Colorado. Coach McBride saw him in the films. He was one of the first of the big-time schools to go after him. Afterwards, a whole lot of them tried to get Luther to change his mind and come to their school as there's an injured ram, but it was not to be. And Luther Ellis, a wonderful young man at the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. And he's certainly making all his relatives proud to drive up there to see their home games. Uh, no Salt question. Lake. He's already broke the tackle for loss record within the school, and he, you know, he has a... 20 career stacks right now so you know he's moving in on a lot of records and he's a physical specimen now now last year he played defensive in where he actually feels he can rush the passer better from the outside he said they don't double up on me as much from the outside but i'll play wherever i can help the defense gives that blocker a little navel name out there yeah geez, that'd be a little cold on the belly i was about to say <laughs> Well, they don't want to lose big EJ because he is a breakaway threat. They have been free of injuries this year. You know, this was a wonderful, known as the Wacky Whack. It's going to become even wackier. In 96, six new schools, Rice, TCU, San Jose, Vegas, Tulsa, SMU. So we got a conference with 16 teams, nine states, five time zones, 4,000 in square miles. Some great road trips if you come into the Whack. Looks like man-to-man -man coverage. Brown in motion, no running backs. Gives him an extra wide receiver here on third down. And Hill high and incomplete, and Colorado State forced to punt. See, the loss of Watson really hurt on that play. Oh, yeah, it does hurt, and he's got to make those plays. you got a guy with a step on the receiver in a critical tight game. Anthony has to make those plays, and that's what the coaches were saying. He's our playmaker. He has to have a big game for us to stand here. Now, one of the things we saw Utah practice yesterday was the punt block. Matt McDougal is the punter for Colorado State. The sure-handed David Kozlowski is back deep. The lone return man with 10 men up on the top. They're coming through. This is something to watch as this game unfolds. Kozlowski misjudges it. It's loose, and he pounces on it at the 16-yard line. You know, I'm not making excuses for Dave Kozlowski as a punt returner, but the wind does things to a football, either when it's coming into the wind or behind the ball. It changes it. See, the wind that time pushed the ball beyond its normal flight, and he misjudged it. See, he was moving up. You talk about, I mean, that wind's got to be 25 miles an hour. He'll back up next time and run into the ball rather than have to be driven back. You watch. Four minutes left, first quarter. It's 2-0. A safety. Utah with the lead over Colorado State. The battle of the unbeatens in the whack. And now McCoy hands off to Cooperwood. Sylvester Cooperwood from Oakland, California. Boy, Ragsdale is right there. They're, they like to run that, getting that split wax and run the lead play, leading the fullback, giving it to the halfback. And Ragsdale was sitting in the huddle that time. He knew what they were going to do. He's known a lot here so far. Well, he was the number one tackler in the squad last year with 98 tackles, so he knows where the ball is. He's made six tackles here already today. Four wide receivers, second and seven for McCoy and the Utes. Four-man rush. Over the middle, Kozlowski, first down, 37-yard line. David did a real nice job of breaking inside that zone, but even a better job by the quarterback at getting him the ball quickly before the linebackers could rally and stop the play. Nice job by Myers. Talking to him about George Allen, you know, he spent a year and a half there with Long Beach State, and he, uh, he was just in awe of George Allen. He just thought he was one of the greatest men he'd ever been around in his life, and he has uh, great, great memories of George Allen. First and ten for the Utes. Rob Hamilton, the running back, behind the Utah quarterback, and it is Hamilton, left side, good hole to the 40-yard line, and Ragsdale with still another stop. 
Ragsdale's going to have a headache by halftime. You know, he, he likes to make plays, and he's an instinctive football player, too. To the right side of your screen, number 97, inside backer. Now watch him just slide in. Now, he did, see how he dipped underneath that block right there? He just knows what to do with those shoulder pads. Left side of that line is Brown and Mahafala. Scott, the center, Nevis and Ray, the right side of the Utah offensive line. 2.27 to go. Right side this time, just short of the first down, out by the 45-yard line, and Sean Moran making the stop. You've mentioned the size of the offensive line in Utah. It, right there that time, for example, the right side came off the ball, and those shorter, not quite as big guys are really having to lock those cleats in the turf to stop from getting driven off the ball, Brent. Third and two. Ragsdale. Now a timeout as Ragsdale stepped up into the hole. McCoy elected to use a timeout. Mr. Ragsdale forcing a timeout to be called here at the 143 mark. Hurry, girls, before Daddy gets up. Ooh, we're ready. Hmm. Now, no more of these are Daddy's corn pops. Oh, look, Daddy's bowl is too full. The problem with a cereal that tastes like popcorn, only sweeter, hmm. is that it disappears hmm. like popcorn, only faster. Mommy, that's Daddy. We share. Hi, girls. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Thanks, guys. Now, let's all go make him breakfast. <laughs> Kellogg's Corn Pops. It's hard to stop when it's Pops. Do you know what Hitachi makes? Ready? Go. Does Hitachi make camcorders, yes. barcode readers, yes. hydroelectric power equipment, yes. clown noses, no. power tools, yes. TV, yes. MRI systems, yes. beanies, no. oscilloscopes, yes. micro motors, yes. mass transit trains, yes. tongue depressors, no. PBX phone systems, yes. catnip, no. semiconductors, yes. uh, lots of products, lots. over 20,000. Yeah, but who's counting? Nebraska, Colorado rolls in. Colorado later today will be taking on K-State down the road in Boulder. Then Nebraska, that's the first of our doubleheader. Then uh, the doubleheader game, many of you will watch the top-ranked team, Penn State, take on Ohio State. If you don't see the game in your area, don't forget to call your cable operator and ask about pay-per-view. Doubleheader next Saturday. No more water boys. They're water girls, boys. Uh, uh, now, this uh, it uh, changed. Uh, uh, political yeah. correctness, that's a water woman. Water I woman. Want no oh. letters. Okay. <laughs> now it is third and two for McCoy and the Utes. Rob Hamilton, the running back. Ragsdale steps into that hole again. They run him to the left side, and he can't make it. Utah forced the punt as Kirk Bowman came in and made the stop. Kirk Bowman whipped the people at the point of attack with his quickness that time, and Ragsdale came right up in and filled it. Here's Bowman. On, here he is showing up right there, number 97. He's going to fill. Coming from the left side of him right now will be Bowman, number 99. See him beat that inside gap down the line of scrimmage. Wham! Makes the play. Nice team defense. Of course, an offensive lineman should never be beaten in the inside gap. Never. Jason Jones punting to Myers again. High, tough punt to field. They'll let it bounce, and Utah down at about the 25-yard line. Boy, fundamentals are so critical, Brent. Just a little thing like that. Offensive lineman coming off straight ahead. A defensive lineman taking an inside gap. You should always protect your inside gap first. How times have changed in the whack, huh, you folks? Bet. At this point, usually Brigham Young with two, three touchdowns. 
wild and woolly and now defense as coach McBride stresses it recruits defensive personnel and the Utah defense right now leading two nothing Leonis Brown is the running back Watson was shaken up this is Brown swinging wide to the right and piggyback ride by Mark Rexford thought he was going to go over to the uh, rodeo corral over there and do a little bulldogging and a uh, reminder that tonight on the abc family movie john ritter is apparent with his hands more than full and problem child too then will a good cop turn dirty an all-new commish right here tonight on abc there's the corral over there there's them bulldogs again afternoon off rodeo <laughs> fellas are all over here watching the football game don't you bring that rexford over here man i don't want him on my back Second down and six now for the Rams. Into the middle of the defense. Pound for a couple of yards. And Luther Ellis, number 83, is there with Jeremy Burkett out of Lakewood, Colorado, checking in for the Rams. Well, you can see that Colorado State really believes in the running game, and they're trying to establish it. Dave Lay, the offensive coordinator, said, we want to be balanced. If we get in a one-way ball game with them and can't run, we're in real trouble. End of the first quarter, 15 minutes in, Utah leads it by a safety. When young policyholders come to me, I look at them and think, boy, that was me 15 years ago. I remember very well how quickly things changed for Debbie and me. Marriage, children, our first house. That's exactly why State Farm's family insurance checkups are such a good idea. Your agent helps you put it all in perspective so you can make the right decisions. The way you were five years ago is not the way you are today. It's comforting to me when I can say to my policyholders, hey, I've been there. State Farm is there. Whoever said now is the winter of our discontent never stood behind our windows. Owens Corning. We make the difference. People are much more satisfied than they have been in the past. Now with quality care standards, we have some guidelines to follow. This is what the customers want. They want to have their appointment within a day. They want to have their car fixed right the first time. This is them speaking. Anything we can do to make it better. It's not just meeting the standards that people are setting for us, but exceeding them. Something we're doing is working. <laughs> quality care people, quality care standards at your Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealer. to fly they wouldn't have put our Advantex fiber in skis Owens Corning we make the difference from the majestic Rocky Mountain West to the scenic beaches of Hawaii the ten institutions comprising the Western Athletic Conference offer an unmatched blend of academic excellence athletic achievement and natural geographic beauty one of the nation's youngest and most dynamic Division I-A conferences, 13 WAC teams made bowl appearances in the last three years. And more than 2 million fans enjoy conference home games each season. The Western Athletic Conference. Well, we'll start the second quarter. Colorado State facing a third and three. Jack Aroot, uh, E.J. Watson's absence from that lineup hurting the Rams. He sorely missed, Brent, and they're continuing to work on him. They do. It is not an ankle. It's an injury to the lower right leg. They're going to retape it, but he continues to favor. Questionable as to how soon they'll get him back out there. Well, let's see what they can do here. Hill's the quarterback. Brown is his running back. Remember, they need three yards to keep it going. They'll send Brown out in motion. So Hill will either pass it or create it himself. Quick pass intercepted, look out. Here comes Leary. Leary for a touchdown for Utah. He read it beautifully. Stepped in front, and there's their outstanding defensive back. And defense is the name of the Utah game. An excellent 
play. Good read, tight end, bottom of your screen, 88. Justin Shule coming off, looking for the quick ball, man-to-man -man coverage. He's sitting right there in front of it, picks it off, fourth interception of the year, and then does a nice job of running it on in. Tuck that ball away, boy. <laughs> oh, gosh, don't do that. <laughs> that sort of irritates me. Yeah, yeah, it would, coach. <laughs> He probably, probably yes. wears an earring, too. Well, I hear their <laughs> fine defense. Imagine this third in the country in total, fourth in the country in total defense, pass defense, third in the country. That interception just demonstrates that graphic. I'm going to tell you, that was quickness when he hit for that ball, and he snapped it down and took off, and Evans, he is a lineman who is uh, quite a story, playing with an injured knee, and now he is down again. And let's take one more look, and he closes so fast. He reads this beautifully. Wham, he just comes up and dissects it, gets it to its highest point, and, and taking it home. Here he is, he could not play last year. He missed the whole season with a herniated disc. Married, has a little daughter. Happy man today. Jackaroo. Grant, this is not what you want to see for Brandon Evans. You know, we alluded to the fact that he's been playing with a torn anterior cruciate ligament, a partially torn medial collateral ligament, and damage to the femur bone. He wears a brace, but what he told us is he doesn't have a problem except when he is in pursuit. That's when the knee tends to get wobbly. This could be a big problem for the Colorado State Rams. Well, it's interesting here with Danny Pulsifer in to kick the extra point as to why the Utah coaches are not thinking about two. They could a miss here. To make it just sit on nine, I guess. Ten if they well, why not? Pulsifer is a good kicker and let's see what happens. It's nine nothing right now. Utah. A slight underdog with a lead, and things are not going well. And there is Evans trailing, and he's blocked down on the play, and that's where he was re-injured. These days, anyone can design and build a car with the quality and features you want. And the safety you need. That's easy. We designed and built the all-new 1995 Lumina. So most people can afford it. And that's what makes the new Lumina a genuine Chevrolet. It could only come from here. Canada, the home of ice. Molson Ice. Ice brewed by North America's oldest brewery to be colder and bolder. Yet smooth as ice. Molson Ice. From the land where ice was born. Wow. Look at the size of this place. A guy who didn't know what he was doing could sure get himself in a lot of trouble here. But hey, I'm sure you'll pick one out. I mean, how hard could it be? Like these guys. They used to make a heck of a movie projector. And anyway, if something does go wrong, I'm sure a handy guy like you, you can probably just fix it yourself. But as long as you're here, maybe you ought to just look at an IBM. It's the ultimate Big East battle. National title hopes and the conference crown are on the line when Colorado tackles Nebraska. It's part of the special doubleheader next Saturday on ABC. A very concerned Sonny Lubeck. One time he was the defensive coordinator for Dennis Erickson down in Miami. He realizes now things are not going his way. This team was on an emotional peak. How will they react now that they must battle from behind? The crowd's still very much in it here. With Chris Myers and Van Ward back deep, set to return. What is a wonderful kickoff out of the end zone. It'll come out on the 20-yard line. Taking a look at the numbers here in the first quarter, as you have been witnessing, it, it's all Utah. Big time in possession. You know, they came into this ball game right here. They came into this ball game averaging better than nine minutes advantage over their opponents and they're doing that here again today no turnovers yet total offense 78 yards to 18 four first downs to one Colorado State's just got to get their motor running got to get executed so Brandon Evans
having that injured knee tended to on the sideline. And his backup moves in at tackle right now. Watson has returned, play fake. Hill rolling over to the right, and the whistle, and there's a penalty down but prior to the snap. Too much time. This is what Anthony Hill does best, is get outside in containment. And it's the number one thing Fred Winningham, the defensive coordinator from Utah, was concerned about. That's another reason they're playing more zone than man-to-man, -man, because there's never anybody man-to-man -man on the quarterback. But it didn't matter because they'd already stopped the play, Dick, That's and there's right. a five-yard penalty. He had a tight end coming across the middle. Look at that. Zero for four in pass attempts so far. Seven for seven for McCoy. First and 15 for Colorado State. Utah with a nine-point lead. The draw play is there. Watson, Watson, 25. Watson down at the 39-yard line. Harold Lusk bringing him down. This is when sometimes you can be too strong and explosive at the nose guard's position. Luther Ellis jumps around that center. Pulowski right in the middle of the screen here. He'll jump around the center right here. He reads it and hits the crack. Nice job by Pulowski. Taking him the way he wanted to go. So he took him out there. There's a nice hole. Also a nice job by Mark Donnelly, number 63. Good blocking downfield. Good running by the running back. So the return of number 19 makes a difference. 24 yards for Watson who will watch now as Brown and they begin to shuttle in their running backs having Watson back is key Hill now he must create and he does an incompletion and he can't get the passing game going which makes this a rather one dimensional offense right now see and again now they expected man to man coverage on that and they got a zone coverage so he's back out there and then the people are settling down in the zones and he couldn't get set up to fire it in time to get the ball between the zones Second quarter of another WAC game. BYU and UTEP will play tonight at 9 o'clock. There's the two Whittinghams, Fred Whittingham and his son, Kyle, both coach on the defensive staff at Utah. Second and 10. Great catch. Great catch. That was number 82. Matt Phillips from Grand Junction, Colorado, reaching back and making the grab for the Rams. And that helped Anthony Hill, too. That was a great catch, but he needed someone to catch a ball, get him started, get him back, gain a little confidence back. But that was a super catch. Now, Ant Matt Phillips is their backup flanker back. Their best receiver, Paul Turner, is out for the year with an injury, and they miss him, but that was a nice catch by Matt Phillips. Third and four. Going empty there. Hill high incomplete. And a penalty flag interference on the play. Enough for a first down to keep the drive moving. Again, now they switched up and went to the man-to-man -man coverage to try to prevent the third down conversion, which is a good call. You'll see that there. And Keith Harrison, number 24, has him all the way man-to-man. -man. Here you have a three receiver situation. They're going to drive off. Now you'll see the breakout right there. Freeze it right there. So you've got the out pattern and the one-on-one -on -one coverage right here. He gets the penalty called. See, he gets to him just a little sooner with his right hand. Oh, that's it. Pass interference. Woo. That's still penalty against the defense. Tight call. Tight call. Don't think coach agreed with it. <laughs> that's a little too tight. I agree with you there, Coach Ron McBride. He didn't like the call. I didn't like it either. Ball across midfield now for the Rams at the Utah 48-yard line. 13-25 first half, 9-0 Utah leading the Rams. Here's Hill. High, throws it up for grabs. Incomplete. Donovan Burks. Donovan Burks might be the fastest man in the WAC conference, WAC conference in shoulder pads. Very good speed, ran on the track team, city champion in Los Angeles, 100 meters, and he can jump as well. But both people get up for there, that's tough. You can't call interference on that. And again, that win pushed that ball back. Good job by Edwin Garrett. 
Wind has been coming in around 20, 25 miles an hour. Coming up from the south on the ridge of the Rockies, blowing up out of the Denver area into Fort Collins. Very much been a factor so far in our ball game. Second down, and here's the toss to Brown. Brown sprinting to the right. He is cut off and down at the 49-yard line. Very well defended. See, they Nate changed Gia up. from Honolulu makes the stop. He changed up, and he ran one of the very few blitzes he plans to run in the football game. And when you blitz, that brings all your coverage people up close into tight coverage and puts you running toward the ball to make that kind of a tackle. On the loss, it is third and 11. Really tough to convert third and 11 against this defensive team. Number one in about every category in the WAC and ranked in the top five in a lot of categories as we showed you earlier. Whittingham right there to the left. That's that's Dad rushing with four. Now a linebacker steps back out. Hill swings it out to Brown, far side, first down. Brown out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Now that's one disadvantage of man-to-man. -man. The man on coverage on Brown that time got picked off trying to get over into the uh, coverage responsibility. They're going to swing it to the back to the top of your screen. Person in coverage on Brown, number four, gets picked off. And he can't get there by his own people and other receivers. Good design. Got it called against the right coverage. A zone, they'd have made that play easy. 19-yard gain. E.J. Watson checks in. Best drive of the afternoon for the Rams. Here is Watson. Hit his own man. Bounced off. Still going for about nine yards as Utah tried to knock it away as he slipped through the defense. This is their best play. Now, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, they call this play crazy. That's all it is. That's what they... That was crazy left. Even I could call that right. I think... Here they got the guard kicking out. Big tackle right there. Meyer 68 right there, getting the nail block right there. He's up there. Now he shows his innate running skills. Now they're trying to strip the football. That's good defensive coaching. Need a couple of yards. Watson, the running back. Hill's going to throw for it. First down. Inside the 15-yard line, Eric Olson of San Marcos, California with the reception. Rams threatening. Now you notice, Brent, on that throw, there was no underneath coverage. So they were in strict man-to-man, -man, everybody taking their, their people. And it was actually the tight end pattern was coming out inside that completed route that was picked off earlier for the touchdown. Got the ball to the right guy. One big difference, they're staying away from number four. four. They are not throwing at Leary over here on the left corner. He has matched up now against Olsen down toward the bottom of your screen. Four wide receivers in for the Rams on first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Hill, option look, Watson on the pitch. Watson inside the five, close to a first down, lost the defender. That's a great call because that's another thing, the option that gives man-to-man -man coverage a real problem, Brent. They can run the receiver, the defender's off, he comes down and pitches it out, and they've done such an efficient job in the red zone this year. You take it this, ladies and gentlemen, see 27 times, but the important thing in that graphic is 20 of those seven, 27 times were touchdowns. Now it is first and goal. They like to run the counter gap here. Now they have a big defensive lineman playing left halfback or right halfback in this situation, Steve Hodge. And he would lead Watson to the right. If they follow the power, they run away from it, and Watson into the middle of the formation, and he has stopped short of the goal line. Steve Hodge is their fine defensive lineman. He's also their leader of their defensive team, but he's also their fullback in goal line short yardage offense. And the coaches said to me the other day, they told the offensive coaches, you could take him and put him on the offense and goal line if you want to, but you better do something with him once in a while. So last week, they threw him a touchdown pass. That was Watson looking just a little hobble, wasn't it, as he came off. And Van Ward, the junior, out of Ohio, checks into that running back spot. Hodge again offset to the right, and this time Hill keeps it for the touchdown. <laughs> Nothing complicated by this. 
just snap the ball, get the lineman to fire off, and find that little crack right there over your right guard, sneak it in there. Pretty sure play. Not a guarantee, not a lock, but if executed properly, a touchdown. David Napier, Escondido, California. And Colorado State pulls to within a pair. It's 9-7. Hill scores his fifth rushing touchdown of the year. It's wild in the whack. About 65 miles south of the nearest stoplight, and two miles up in the Rocky Mountain sky, you'll find skiers heaven, also known as Telluride Ski Mountain, where the skiing's perfect and the views are even better. And whether you're going to extremes or just going for a lesson, don't go without your visa card, because at Telluride Ski Mountain, they'll let you take the plunge, but they won't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. You started putting money away from my college when I was little, right? Smartest thing I ever did. I guess I gotta start thinking about stuff like that. I talked to my guy, Payne Weber. He got you through college. Broker? Do I want to be in stocks right now? I thought the same thing when I started saving for you. Buddy, show me if I was looking long term, and the only place to be is in the market. And he'll know that's what I'm looking for. He'll know. Some things in life you have to wait for. A car of your dreams shouldn't be one of them. The Chevy Camaro. Two airbags. Fuel injected V6. Anti-lock brakes. It's $14,750 worth of a genuine Chevrolet. I think I've told more people that I've enjoyed coaching in 89 and 90 more than anything I've ever coached. I've never seen kids work any harder on the football field, give greater effort, fight any harder, and yet live the right way. They made my life so easy, it was unbelievable. Unbelievable. I can't believe it's gonna be snuffed out by some guy. I wish them well, and they've got a bunch of great kids. I really love them. Uh, and, and this is the year that they should be good. This is the year that is uh, uh, the recruiting class after the Freedom Bowl, and uh, it's been very good for, for them, and it was it's very exciting to see them be successful. And Sonny Lubick replaced Earl, and remember that many of these youngsters were recruited by Earl, but then Sonny took them the next step. And here they are now with a kickoff to Lusk for Utah, Lusk with an alley, Lusk explodes, 35, spinner to the 43-yard line. Dick, you have a connection with the Lusk family. Tell I, us that story. I do. I coached his brother, the Philadelphia Eagles, Brent, for three years. Herb Lusk, he was my tailback. I can remember breaking the 68-yard touchdown I toss play against the New York Giants. And we called him the praying tailback because he was studying to be a minister. And he, he told me, as soon as I get my degree, I'm going to become a minister. And right now, he's uh, doing a great job doing just that in Philadelphia. Utah leading 9-7, brings it up here at the 42-yard line. Cooperwood is back in that backfield. McCoy, the quarterback, with a little change up at the line of scrimmage against this Colorado State defense. Cooperwood across the 45 to the 47 in number 97. Kenya Ragsdale from Akron, Ohio. Dick, how does someone from Akron, Ohio get out here to Fort Collins and get away from the clutches of the Buckeyes of Ohio State with the kind of talent that he's got at linebacker. You know, you, you, you would wonder that, you know, but I'll tell you, sometimes kids want to get into different areas. I mean, we find that in, when I was coaching at UCLA, sometimes kids just want to get out of that area and get into, hey, a beautiful area. It wouldn't take much to recruit me here, I'll tell you that. Brown and Hamilton, the running backs. Complete for Hamilton. Uh, Jack Aroot, what's the latest on the offensive situation for the Rams? Well, Brent, as we said at the top of the show, this is what college football is all about. Behind me is E.J. Watson. You can see that his left ankle has been taped way high with an ace bandage. He said when he came out, he was limping very badly because when he stretched for the goal line, it twisted once again. They asked him if he wanted to come out of the game. He said, no way, he's in it for the long haul. 
That's the kind of desire they have shown here this year. That's why Colorado stayed unbeaten. Utah playing with a lot of heart, too. McCoy, 7 of 8 for 49 yards. This is third and six. It looks like blitz. He's audibling, Brent. He can recognize the blitz because the safeties are closer. And he hits on the slant, but it's short of the first down. Great defense that time by Ray Jackson. See, the tight man-to-man -man coverage pulled him up on him, and he made the good, firm tackle and prevented that first down. See, he read it. The normal move is to run the slants against a blitz read. So that's what they do. They come in, and Ray Jackson, number 31, does a nice job of driving to make that play. I talked to him the other day on the practice field. Did he, was he concerned about covering his good receivers? He says, Coach, in the whack, you cover good receivers every week. Colorado State to get it back now. Jason Jones into punt again. Myers back to return, standing on the Rams' 10-yard line. And they have already taken a delay of game a little bit earlier, and they will do it again to back him up. He's a fine punter. He wants a little bit more room. They said to take it back. Dick, I have a question. In that situation, why not just decline it if they're so eager to bring it back? No, well, the players turned to the bench, and the coaches told them to take it back. So they, they think they have a good return team. Uh, Greg Myers is one of the best in the WAC. He's number one uh, last year. He's averaging 11.8 yards of return. They want to give him a shot to return one. Tight defensive game. Kicking becomes such a huge factor in an emotional ball game between two on beats. They're coming! Fielded by Utah in the air. It'll be down right there where he downed it. Colorado State will have it at the 49. A partially blocked punt. It was Jim Dietrich out of Lake Forest, Illinois, who blocked it. You could see that coming from up here. He gets it off. I mean, he's in good rhythm like that, but just good, good penetration inside like that, and they get the football. They break down inside. No way should Dietrich be turned loose like that. The offensive left guard in the punt team blew the protection, turned him loose. Colorado State has suddenly turned things in its direction. E.J. Watson in at running back. Crowd alive. One of the largest in the history of Hughes Stadium. Anthony Hill must create on the move as an open man is tight end first down. Justin Shaw. We get confirmation now that this will be the largest crowd in the history of Colorado State. More than 39,000 into Hughes Stadium, and they're seeing a dandy right now. With eight minutes to go in the first half. Utah leading because of a safety in the early minutes. It's 9-7, but Colorado State on the move again. Ball inside the Utah 40-yard line. Here's Watson, left side, crease to the 33-yard line, and Mark Rexford making the stop for the Utes. Real nice job by Mark Rogowski, number 77, the offensive left tackle, who's replacing Brandon Evans, the injured player earlier. Mark did a nice job of battling that time with the left tackle position right here. Did a nice job of sticking and staying. Now watch him come off. Now watch him just keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting. Nice job there, fella. You bet. He gave him an extra five with that kind of effort. Second down. Hill, open receiver at the 15-yard line is Eric Olson. I'll tell you, the game turned completely around on the interception for a touchdown. Colorado State has not been the same football team since that wake-up call. We have a big square-in pattern going to be run by Olsen at the bottom of your screen. He sneaks. They're playing zone now. When he comes back inside that zone and throw it, chances are they won't play much more zone. They're going to play him a little tighter coverage. Now the ball at the Utah 15-yard line. Colorado State again moving against one of the best defenses in the nation. E.J. to the 
nine yard line and a nice stop by Luther Ellis. Boy, and it's a good thing he made it because they had the point of attack uh, blocked properly, Brent, but the backside people didn't get old Luther Ellis cut off. So after Hill's shaky 0 for 5 start, he has hit five of his last six, driven him for a touchdown. Now he's trying to get the lead before the intermission. The ball inside the 15-yard line. It's going to be second and nine against Lethal Luther and his buddies. And he gets after people. But they've taken advantage of some of his overpowering charges today by running plays by him, you know, as he gets upfield. inside the 10-yard line. See that option against the man-to-man. -man. The two outside receivers can run off the defenders if they're playing man-to-man, -man, and there isn't anybody to come up there quickly to make the play. And they're not a big option team, but, but they like to run it down here in the red zone. This guy has done a real good job of, of putting this whole football. There's the two uh, father and son team coaching defense for Utah that we talked about earlier. That's a great shot. One wants the alligator and the other wants that dog. Blow the call. <laughs> The coach is looking for confirmation of the distance with an injured player down here. Another injured Colorado State. You know, one of the reasons behind the Rams' success has been the absence of injuries. And here today, we've had Evans go down, and now they'll send in their field goal unit. With 6.28, they're trailing by two. Field goal into the breeze it's at the right angle david napier one of the better kickers in the whack on the field They're playing man-to-man, -man, and there isn't anybody to come up there quickly to make the play. And they're not a big option team, but, but they like to run it down here in the red zone. This guy has done a real good job of, of putting this whole football. There's the two uh, father and son team coaching defense for Utah that we talked about earlier. That's a great shot. What's One wants the alligator and the other wants the dog. Blow the call. <laughs> They said that's a smelly call, Dad. <laughs> now it's third down and three for Colorado. There isn't anybody to come up there quickly to make the play. And they're not a big option team, but, but they like to run it down here in the red zone. This guy has done a real good job of, of putting this whole football. There's the two... Uh, Father and son team coaching defense for Utah that we talked about earlier. That's a great shot. One wants the alligator and the other wants the dog. Blow the call. <laughs> said, that's a smelly call, Dad. Now it's third down and three for Colorado State. Two wide receivers, double tight end. It's Brown. Brown slips. At the seven, that's short of a first down. Decision time for Lubick and Colorado State. See, they ran an outside blitz, brought both people off the corner, and that forced him back up inside. He almost made it if he had not slipped. It's a counter action. Now, the counter move allows the offensive lineman to get out in front of him right there and see he slips as he tries to make the cutback. The coach is looking for confirmation of the distance with an injured player down here. Another injured Colorado State. You know, one of the reasons behind the Rams' success has been the absence of injuries. And here today, we've had Evans go down, and now they'll send in their field goal unit. With 6.28, they're trailing by two. Field goal into the breeze. It's at the right angle. David Napier, one of the better kickers in the whack, on the field. He's 10 for 13 kicking field goals this year, Brent. And as you said, one of the better guys and at this distance he's four for five a quarterback eric prawl number 16 is the holder the ball would be put down at the 14 yard line it would be a 24 yard attempt 
think it's a good decision to go for this field goal, Brent. You know, that Utah had only given up two first downs on fourth down situations out of eight attempts, so they knew what they were attacking. Blocked. Picked off by Leskett to go. Still running. And out of bounds at the 29-yard line off the blocked field goal. Utah still leads it by two, 9-7. Blocked field goal follows the blocked punt. Right? I think it was more a low kick than a real true block. By gosh, no, you're going to have to give the, the leaper credit for that one. I think that was Jeff Kafusi, number 99, who is six foot seven, 260 pounds, and he can leap. And then Lusk took it out and gave Utah a decent field position. He returned it up to the 28-yard line. So a big, huge break for the Utes. Six minutes to go, 9-7, they lead it by a deuce. A defensive struggle in the whack. My, how times have changed. Hamilton on the handoff, and he's out to the 34. We're seeing hitting like we saw last week in the Southeastern. That's right. In the weeks before in the Big Ten, such a difference with this conference coach. Well, they're trying to become total football teams, and they haven't had enough athletes. And maybe it's the scholarship limits throughout the country down to 85 that we give more kids spread out on scholarships to other conferences, and it's paying off here. Plus, good coaching jobs by defensive coaches. Sylvester Cooperwood back in that backfield. One of these times they're going to slip him out as a receiver. This time he'll run it. Goes down at the 36-yard line. Coaches will want to see him run a little bit harder when he gets hit the first time like that. That's right. He normally does run out of those kind of uh, tackles, too. But I'll tell you this. Steve Hodge, who made that play from the defensive right tackle position, is a really an inspirational football player. He is the leader of the defense. He... Uh, controls the tempo of the defense and there he controls the tempo of a running back now McCoy and the Utes would like to control a first down it's third and two for them four wide receivers it looks like man coverage short drop man on man on the left oh, the interference. Interference. first down for Utah there was no question about it Vincent Booker there, number 10, hooked him all the way, Brent. They saw the blitz coming. Good adjustment by McCoy. Let me tell you something. If he didn't hook him, it might have been six. Oh, yes. If he throws the ball accurately, I mean, Brent, it's a gimme. There isn't anybody there. They're going man-to-man -man and pressuring. See it right down here at the bottom corner of your screen. Here it is right there. A lot of green turf in between that one-on-one -on -one situation. Yeah, Darren Claiborne. Had he snapped that ball off for the Utes, he was going to go the distance. They had the other wide receivers and the defensive backs stretched out way to the far side. Claiborne with great speed, and now Booker's over there talking to Coach, and Sonny telling him just to be calm now. When Claiborne comes off, don't press him all that much. 4.41 to go in the first half. That's when, you, when you're in those blitz situations as a defensive team, then you normally play zone. You now, in that situation, have your second string corner playing all the way over here in that field. And that's what Vincent Booker is. So I think he made a good decision. Yeah, I do too. Regardless, Utah with a fresh set of downs. Cooperwood, number 22, in at running back. The ball at the 46-yard line. Penalty marker is down, Cooper Wood, and the play is stopped before it begins, and that gives me an opportunity as they sort this out to remind you that at the conclusion, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. And for the 24th year, through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the general scholarship Good fund ball. of each school. Ball start. Five-yard penalty against the offense. First down. All right, referee McCabe, thank you very much. And a reminder that John Saunders will be coming your way at halftime. Lots of things going on in college football. The Prudential Halftime Report. John Saunders with scores and highlights and a conversation with Auburn coach Terry Bowden. That's all ahead of us. Here it's 438. Utah 9, Colorado State 7. Utah with a first and 15 after the illegal procedure penalty. McCoy, middle, open again. It's Hamilton to the 49-yard line, and Ragsdale makes the stop. That time, defensively, Larry Kerr changed up the defensive coordinator and called an outside linebacker blitz, but they picked it up properly, and it was a short, well-timed throw. 
97 has been huge defensively you for know, the Rams. I don't, I don't think Utah has taken advantage of having the wind behind their back yet, Brent, you know, and, and getting the ball downfield. Northwestern stunned Indiana today. Beat them flat out. That's a team that has dominated the Wildcats. Coach Barnett was on the Colorado staff. He's done a wonderful job. Here's McCoy. Drops it off. Oh. Utah ball, short of the first down. There's the young man who jarred the ball free, Garrett Sand. <laughs> he knocked the sand out of him. You know what really impresses me here is McCoy. Watch him slide up in, and he never looks panicked. Just slides right up there and delivers in the ball, and wham! Oh, hello, Curtis. That hurts. <laughs> These kids hit. How many times have you said, these kids hit today already, first half. Big time atmosphere in Fort Collins, Colorado. Third down and three, three minutes, nine, seven. Good defensive game. A linebacker blitz again. Complete. First down, out of bounds at the 40 yard line goes Kevin Dyson. Those kind of passes against man-to-man -man coverage are high percentage completions. They're bringing people right now. They're going to bring the linebacker, try to get pressure on them, force them to throw out a rhythm, but they got it off quickly to the right side of your screen, thrown perfect. See, he could catch the ball and keep right on running. Blocked field goal started this possession for the Utes after a blocked punt gave Colorado State an opportunity to take the lead. They didn't. Now Utah on the move. Ball inside the 40-yard line. Senior quarterback Mike McCoy hands it off now. A two-yard gain behind the left side of his offensive line and Garrett Sand coming up to make the stop again on Sylvester Cooperwood. And a reminder that Monday night, Dick, ABC Sports is going to head to your old stomping ground. Yeah, the Phil Bell. Bell. Yeah, yeah, Houston. Phil, what do you think of that one, partner? Well, I'll tell you, I think e Eagles are a much better football team than Houston Oilers. That's obvious right now. Houston are really struggling, combining the two different kinds of offense, the run and shoot and, and the one-back attack with the tight end. and that. They aren't beating anybody. Second down and nine. McCoy at the line for the Utes. over the middle and it threw behind his receiver he had Dyson and he made the receiver reach back on the play and look at Mike McCoy he says you know I should have made that play you know he was pressured that time Brent and he just kept sliding and sliding until he found a throwing lane never looks panic and this is one of the things the Colorado State coaching staff was concerned about this guy they say he doesn't have a reputation for being mobile and running but they think he's very very good in that pocket fighting finding the place to throw Make it third and nine. McCoy being forced. There's a penalty flag down. Throws back. Kozlowski would be a first down, but I believe holding is going to be the call. I believe this one's coming back. Sean Moran is calling holding. He's the defensive left end. Rushing over the offensive right tackle, and he's standing there. You know, they came in here, the number nine penalized team. They're getting penalized right now. Let's see if we can find out who the holding is on here. And there's 74 on the left side of your screen. Now he tackles it right there and pulls him down. It appears that's who they called it on. This is a long, from the point of the holding call, makes it come all the way back to the Utah 44-yard line and sets up a third and 27. A huge holding penalty with the crowd alive. Win behind Utah now. Inside of two minutes left in the first half. So you can afford to go real loose zone in this kind of situation too, Brent. McCoy's going to go deep. To the end zone and broken up by Greg Myers. Absolutely spectacular play made by the free safety. 
academic all whack, 3.7 GPA biology student, getting a straight A playing defense right here. Watch this play, left hand right there. Beautiful job. And take another look. That was so good. Nice job. And Dick, even if he had caught it, it was going to come back. An ineligible receiver was downfield on the play. Now, you would think that because the play is made in the situation, they would decline it, force Utah to punt here with a minute and a half to go in the first half, maybe even make a run at another punt. Ineligible receiver downfield. Penalty against the offense. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Now, Jason Jones trots onto the field. And remember, Colorado State got a piece of his last punt. Okay. Myers, who broke that one up, goes back to the Colorado State 15-yard line. So Utah, last five possessions here. They have punted all day. Remember, the defense Whoa, has been a touchdown, and he booms this one. There's no block this time. Oh, man. He nailed it. Utah's defense leads Colorado State 9-7. 124 left, first half. At Chevrolet, we feel everyone, regardless of income, deserves a safe car. That's why we equip the all-new Lumina LS with dual airbags, anti-lock brakes, side guard door beams, child security rear door locks. Sure, anyone can build a car like this. That's easy. We build it so most people can afford it. That's genuine Chevrolet. Richard Belial used to cut study hall every day to go back to Mr. Garber's math class. Last year, Matthew Garber became a teacher with the help of a scholarship from Hitachi and the College Football Association. And already, he's got quite a following. In a world this fast, knowledge that is up to date today can be out of date tomorrow. That's why research is so important at the University of Utah. Research helps the faculty stay on top of the information explosion, which means students benefit from the most current thinking, the creation of new knowledge, and from the skills necessary to solve the problems of a changing world. Think about it. Where you get your education does make a difference. The University of Utah. Well, next Sunday, we'll have the final event on the PGA Tour, and that's their championship. The top 30 money earners will be at the famed Olympic Club in San Francisco. Check it out a little bit between football plays. Should be a good one. And uh, there it is, security guarding the hillsides. Let no man enter. I'm telling you what, I'm making the crowd... 7-5 to five if Colorado State comes back and wins this to seize that hillside. Out of the shotgun, Anthony Hill trying to shake and bake a little bit here. And he's out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Let's see, timeouts left here, Mr. Vermeil. The Rams have a pair of them. That's Only 119 to work with going into the wind. Uh, they're not odds on to get anything done here, Party. Now, I'll tell you, though, with that kind of quarterback... It, to get both run and throw in these situations, you're going to get a looser defense in this district. They can move the ball. Colorado, 128 yards. Utah, 38. Boy, that switched around. The game turned around after the interception, interception. by Utah when they scored the touchdown. Leary's touchdown just seemed to bring Colorado State alive. They'll run Brown. Brown cuts back across to the 36. And uh, I remember know. time stops when you make a first down in college football. He wanted to get out of bounds, but there were white jerseys out there, so he, he elected to take it back up inside. Minute 11. Still have their two timeouts. Watched them go through the two-minute drill on the field the other day. They like the shotgun. They like to throw the underneath stuff. You know, they haven't gotten the ball in Burkett's hand yet either, number 22, and he's the guy they like to get him in the open field situations. Now Hill looking over in that direction. High and complete to Olsen at the 44-yard line. 
And another first down. They now they're in business. They call a timeout because the offensive team had to move so far. Good decision. What they did that time, they took the slot back, Burkett, and hooked him up and ran the pattern in behind that zone with the deeper receiver. Good design. Now we've got an opportunity and a break here. Let's check some of the upcoming shows on ABC. Doc says she's got to get that operation within a week or she doesn't have a chance. He can save his wife's eyesight with dirty money. You've had a great career, John. Don't spoil it by doing something you don't have to do. Will Tony turn him in or turn the other way? The Kamesh, Saturday on ABC. Sunday on Lois and Clark. Everything super with Lois and the Man of Steel. Until an international crime ring led by Peter Boyle and Bruce Weitz tries to take over the world. Now Superman has to go undercover. An all-new Lois and Clark, Sunday on ABC. And Dick, the man calling the plays for David Colorado Lay. State. David Lay, the offensive coordinator. He said the success of the game was going to be dependent upon his quarterback, Mr. Anthony Hill. He started out slow, and all of a sudden he's caught fire, and they're moving the football. 44 yards to the end zone, 50 seconds, and one timeout, which to work here in the first half. Hill. Intercepted by Leary, his second of the first half. Leary coming back, slips a tackle. And now Leary down at the 31-yard line. His two interceptions, the difference in the ball game. See, they, they backed off and played zone that time, and he didn't read it properly and makes the error. Should not throw that ball down there like that. Line drive, nice throw, nice tight spiral. Look good from here, Brent. See, but just good loose coverage down there. Good pass protection. Nice throwing lane right there to the right side of your screen. You'll see him just falling off, playing very loose zone. Tough to complete that one. This guy is, you know, they told us about him prior to the game, that he's a good one. He's demonstrating that today. He's upset with Lust over there. Lust was getting a bit of a lecture there on the side after the interception. And, out of uh, bounds. Cooper Wood cannot get out of bounds here. In 30 seconds, one timeout left for Utah. There's the young man, Leary. He intercepted the pass and ran it in for the Utah touchdown. There's the defensive coordinator. And there's Leary over there with Lusk. Evidently, evidently there was a mistake made in the secondary. But sure, the end result, uh, the time to correct a mistake is now, you know, and I've always believed that. And Young people learn by making mistakes and, and being disciplined and, and, and coached to do it properly. And Lust comes from a real strong family, good people, and uh, they would want their son scolded, let's say, when he makes a mistake. <laughs> Typical whack game, running a little bit lengthy here in the first half. Some of those folks who are dreaming about getting to the airport this evening may have to change their plans and stay and celebrate with us in Fort Collins, regardless of the outcome of the ball game. Now Coach Fred Whittingham goes over and consoles him. He says, listen, gosh darn it, you're a darn good football player. You made a mistake. Now get your chin up and let's go play football. Do it again, I'll kick you. <laughs> Great hanging around with a coach. Look at him smile. 25 seconds. Second and six. Bobble. Inters hold on. Intercepted on the ricochet. Garrett Sand picks it off. 20 seconds, and suddenly the Rams are back in business. Garrett Sand is the individual that created the great hit a few minutes ago popped him from that outside linebacker spot now he gets the turnover it's a crossing pattern underneath the zone you'll see number six coming right in there claiborne he got he's bobbling right there and it goes right to him now the quarterback is called is given credit for throwing an interception here but boy that's tough that should go some other way statistically let's see if the rams can capitalize they'll show the shotgun Hill trying to keep the crowd noise down. High and one hops it. 
15 boy. seconds to go. Boy, that is a long, long throw. That was an 18-yard comeback on the far sideline, and he's standing on the right hash mark, Brent. Boy, that's a long throw. That takes a cannon to get it over there. With one timeout left, I, I kind of believe they'd be better off trying to throw it up inside those zones, get it in the field goal position, and call the timeout right there, rather than trying to get it all the way across the field like that. I don't think they kick a field goal in this win. Maybe not. If they get it closer, though. Or you get down yeah, about close, the big, I think you right, got to get inside the 15-yard line. Yeah, arm. it's getting pretty heavy. Second down. They go empty. And Hill is going to run it and stop the clock with nine seconds to go. Well, Hill was one of the defensive coach's main concern, that mobility. Because not only can he get out outside the pocket and foul up the rush, it concerns the coverage people because if they're locked up in man-to-man -man and he's running down the field with a the ball, they don't see it. So he creates a lot of problems. You know what's a, 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 thing, a good thing to, to talk about in regard to him is his, his character. He starts out really slow. I mean, he can't hit anything. He's 0 for 5, and then he gets going, and now he's playing tough. Throws an interception, doesn't let it bother him. Good competitor, huh? Yeah, he's a competitor. High left side, Olsen ricochet. The Buffalo magic doesn't work. <laughs> state and it's Colorado they got it done before huh? well yeah but maybe they'd have to go to Michigan to do it <laughs> they're gonna get a chance to do it one more time now the one thing you want to do is a defensive back in this situation when the ball is thrown down there is get it out of there and get it down just knock that ball down and Lusk was back there in deep center field He's standing back inside. Well, he's around about the 15-yard line right now. The center fielder, and here we come again. Final play of the first half. He's getting it high enough. Intercepted. This one by Lusk. And now it is Lusk down. His time runs out on the first half. Well, he redeems himself. You know, here, you know, Lusk was a quarterback a year ago, playing in secondary really for a year and a half now, this year and a little bit of last year. So three interceptions, one for a touchdown on a safety. It's the Utah defense. That's the story here at the half. John Saunders is coming up next on ABC. CFA College Football on ABC Sports, brought to you by Chevrolet, the cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day. Genuine Chevrolet and Hitachi. Hitachi makes over 20,000 innovative products. Stay tuned for the Prudential Halftime Report after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Do you know what Hitachi makes? Ready? Go. Does Hitachi make camcorders, yes. barcode readers, yes. hydroelectric power equipment, yes. clown noses, no. power tools, yes. TVs, yes. MRI systems, yes. beanies, yes. oscilloscopes, yes. micro motors, yes. mass transit trains, yes. tongue depressors, no. PBX phone systems, yes. no. semiconductors, yes. uh, lots of products. Lots. We got five brutal weeks ahead of us, and we put on, and I think we understand that. I think we know that. Joining us now, a couple of undefeated head coaches. First, Terry Bowden, the head coach of Auburn, and Bill McCartney of Colorado. And we'll Playing her guts out down there.
the Utah offense. Jack, Utah kicks it off here to start the second half. Colorado State will get the first possession. And the two hoppers fielded at the two-yard line and down at the 19-yard line. Good work by the coverage team by the Utes that time. At number 20, Clarence Lawson's out of Las Vegas. Let's give him a little credit for that hit. They probably shouldn't do or try to change much what they were doing in that second quarter. The, the counter, the, uh, the, cra the play they call the crazy play, that counter gap play was effective for them. That kind of running, running off the nose guard was effective for them. And the misdirection of the, with the quarterback was really effective. Brown opens up as the running back. Remember, he and E.J. Watson took turns throughout the first half. Breaks it for five or six yards before Jason Hooks brings it down. See, they're not fooling around. They're just lining up, coming off, base zone blocking straight ahead and trying to find that crack. That time they find the crack. Quickness, they're a little bit quicker maybe offensively than Utah is defensively. Defensively, Utah is bigger and stronger. Colorado taking advantage of their quickness. So it'll be second down and four after the six-yard gain. Mark Rexford and his defensive buddies get ready to go back to work. Play fake Hill rolling to the right. Incomplete at the 40-yard line. And a penalty flag. A late one comes down. See, again, that's that misdirection in the backfield. Start one way, waggle out the other way, looking for the crossing patterns. They did a good job of taking away the initial receiver. They wanted to throw close to the line of scrimmage to the tight end. That's the second pass interference call. Automatic first down. Coming out to the 40-yard line. They're going to have to get some pressure off the corner to stop that quarterback from getting out there that cleanly, Brent. Widen the defensive ends, maybe, and, and bring them a little further upside. Invite them to come back inside a little bit more with the running game. So a fresh set of downs now, and Coach Whittingham and the defensive brain trust of the Utes have to be just a little concerned here in the early going, but all in all, they've done an outstanding job. in that shotgun runs out of it dives up over the top for a yard and a half. I thought he thought maybe that was the end zone eh? that's a very clever play Brent I have not seen anybody run the counter gap play with the quarterback from the shotgun that's an unusually uh, and it's a different type of play normally when you run the counter gap you give it to this man and he goes over and runs it See, cleared here. Now you'll see that both linemen pulling it, but they're using the quarterback. Good design. Of course, it didn't make any yards. Good defense. <laughs> well, I thought the leap was the most important part of it myself. <laughs> Second and nine, and here's Hill. They're in an unbalanced formation now down to the bottom of the screen, Brent. Steps out to the left and throws on the move high and incomplete. Boy, that's hard to throw that deep running like that. You just couldn't quite get enough on that ball. But see, they were in an unbalanced formation, meaning more people than they normally have over to the left side of the ball that time, trying to get the defense to move over. Jeremy Burkett brings the play in from the Coach Lubick sideline. I'm still waiting for them to get the ball in his hands. He's very good in the open field. He's a converted running back, playing an H-back, slot-back type guy. If he catches it in open field, he's dangerous. He is off to Hill's left. Hill is back in the shotgun. Needs nine yards. Utah shows a four-man rush. They send Olsen in motion through the formation. And Hill's going to hit Brown out of that backfield and try to get him to some space, but he could not. And Colorado State is forced to punt, and that was Keith Harrison, number 24, with the coverage. They were trying to beat the man-to-man -man coverage, but they didn't play man-to-man. -man. Ended up in the zone. Matt McDougal into punt, and we see that Leonis Brown, the running back, is injured and down on the field. And remember, E.J. Watson is also banged up. He is the other running back. Here's Leonis Brown going out of bounds right here. He's grabbing his left hip. So he's doing that. 
He's a senior out of San Fernando, California. Southern California, that is. Brother to Charles White, the Heisman Trophy winner at USC. Now, if E.J. Watson can't play, they're down to their third string tailback. Fred Oglesby heads up the training department there at Colorado State. They do an outstanding job with kids with, that are bumped and bruised. That was a real good defensive series for Utah that time. They had to come out here and do something really convincing. It's going to be interesting to see if they attempt an all-out block of a punt. Well, going in game plan-wise, they felt they had a shot at getting it, and they were going to go on the center's uh, shoulder movement, not the ball, because he tend to move those early. And they fucked him that time, and they're coming, and they got it. There it is. The block punt. And this will give fumble again. Scooped up by Colorado State. And a wild and woolly one, but Utah will have only five yards to go for a touchdown on the blocked punt. A play they worked on at practice yesterday. The center bucked his shoulders, and they came on that move. They got underneath right here like that, and they're watching the shoulders of the center because he moves his shoulders prior to the snap. You can see him get right up underneath inside there. Here he comes. He dives out beautifully out in front of the punter, just like he's coached to do it. Now it's a mad dash for the football. Strode trying to get it there, number 15, and wham! Oh, oh, man, was that a hit by Clarence Lawson, number 20. Wyoming Air Force really took it to Fresno State today, didn't they? BYU later, New Mexico, Hawaii off this week. And here, Utah with a two-point lead and threatening after the block punt. A first and goal. Strode is out of the play at least because of that injury. One running back, double tied in for Utah. They run him and Brown to the end zone. No signal yet from the officials. Charlie Brown just good base blocking straight ahead. Charlie Brown carrying the ball on his 23rd birthday. That's today, 23 years old. Wearing number 23. Inches to go. Your brother's birthday today, right? Yeah. My he's brother's like, birthday today. We really? had a lot of birthdays today. They're both back there celebrating in Chicago. Yeah, you gave, you gave him a real great gift. I was probably <laughs> driving around in his brand new 80-year-old limousine. <laughs> <laughs> Hope it doesn't suddenly stop. Now the quarterback, McCoy, and I don't think he got it. No signal. It's going to be third down, huh? These kids are very, very determined kids on defense. Brady Smith, defensive end Steve Hodge. Kenya Ragsdale, Kirk Bowman, Sean Moran, playing their guts out down there. Very Lon McBride for us. Mm -hmm. Coach McBride, I've known for a long time, been a very, very good assistant football coach, finally got his opportunity to do the head coaching job, and he's done it well. Third and goal, McCoy. Going again, this time to the end zone. Touchdown, Utah. He just went to his left right over Roy Maafala. Good line surge by Roy Maafala, the left side of the line there. Anthony Brown, the big left tackle, are coming off the ball. Don't have far to go, but see, there was a nice little crack right there. Good decision by the quarterback, Mike McCoy, to slide that way. Holy I hope they're not my kids. <laughs> Might be my son. <laughs> Could be yours. He goes to school here. <laughs> that flags flag. all over the place. Uh, the pulse of her. Extra point. Oh, hold on here a second. So we've had a game with two block punts. We've had a safety on a snap over a quarterback's head into the end zone. We've had an intercepted pass for a touchdown. Folks, it has been wacky. Normally in games with all those things happening, there's a blowout somewhere, you know, but the two defenses are playing so hard that the, it, it's keeping the game close. In keeping with the whack, I think this one is going to be a long game. Now, Pulse 
first try to get. They were coming hard, but he still nails it. And Utah leads it 16 to 7. The battle for leadership in the WAC. What am I doing here with you? You're my brother. It's your genetic obligation to help me. Right, right, right. So, the Grand Dam has a 150 horsepower engine standard. Oh, it is a blast to drive. The balance shaft makes it smooth as silk. Standard airbag and anti-lock brakes. brakes. Exactly. You know the Grand Dam costs thousands less than the Accord or the Camry? Really? Yep, I researched it. Well, you've made a smart choice. Thank you. Yeah, so what am I doing here? You're helping me pick out a color. Color. how remotes get lost? <laughs> well, no matter how your remote gets lost, Magnamox makes the only television that can find it. With the exclusive remote locator, you just push a button, and your remote beeps, telling you where it is. <laughs> hey, we make technology people want. Magnavox, smart, very smart. There he is, Mike McCoy, who scored Utah's second touchdown, 16-7. Utes lead the Rams right now, and Pulsifer to kick it off. Oh, he's got a strong leg. That oh, was you into got, the wind. That was into the wind. That's a great kick. Well, here's the play that set it all up. The uh, punt block. And the young man who comes in there, number 28, is quite a story. Via Ofa. He's a junior out of Salt Lake City. And like a lot of youngsters on special teams around the country, he is a walk-on. A legitimate walk-on who just asked for a chance, went on, made the football team, and there he is making one of the great plays. It's lovely to see these walk-ons get the job done. Oh, it is. It really is. It's exciting. He's five foot nine. He doesn't look five nine from up here, so he had to really stretch out to get that ball. Dick Van Ward checks in now for Colorado State. He's behind Anthony Hill. And here comes Ward swinging to the left, and he is cut off by Ernest Boyd, the strong safety who sealed him up. Well, Van Ward is a junior from Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Another guy ex escaped that state and ended up here playing football. He has some experience, Brent. He's carried the ball 128 times coming into this ball game over the, his career. Dick, uh, talk to the audience about the difference between Luther Ellis and Warren Sapp, the other great defensive lineman we saw down in Miami a few weeks ago. Well, just watching Luther on game tape, I don't think he's quite as explosive, though he's much bigger and maybe more powerful. Not quite as explosive out of his stance. He's lined up at left defensive tackle. He's number 83. They run away from him with Ward, and Ward is sealed up. Cal Beck came off that corner to help out with Henry Kafusi. Kafusi is a big name and one we're familiar with through some coverage of Brigham Young. That's right, the Kafusi brothers there, and there are two of them on here. Uh, Steve Kafusi played the Philadelphia Eagles for a while, and I got to meet him there. Had a chance to visit with him on the field here yesterday. He's going to graduate school. Is this the first you time don't. you've been to uh, Fort Collins, partner? I drove through here on a family reunion one time and really enjoyed it. It's really a lovely town. Oh, Growing hey. a lot. They could recruit me. You bet. We got a little uh, bit of a blaze here in the uh, background. That's third down and eight. Now it's Hill. He'll sprint out of trouble. Does this very well. And Hill gets a blocker. Follows it beautifully. Breaks free on the sideline. And finally out of bounds. What a job by the CSU quarterback. He makes plays, and he made one here. He came into this ballgame with a 
68-yard run to his credit at his longest run. Now he gets back there. This is his real plus. They pick up the stun inside. He's flushed. See, they're obviously in a man coverage. No one covering him one-on-one. -on -one. That's the problem with playing man coverage against this. Good block down by field by Eric Olson. And here comes... Ernest Boyd there, he, I'll tell you, he was trying to find one more step. He couldn't get it. I think he was running out of gas. 9.59 and trying to get a breath, trying to get it back. He's got to take charge. E.J. Watson checks in at the tail. It'll be handed off this time. He's exhausted. Here's Watson. They knew this was coming. With a tired quarterback like that, you knew he had to hand the ball off, and Kafusi makes the play for the Utah defense. I'll tell you, if they run that same action and he keeps the ball, comes off the corner out the other way, whew, he's I, too tired to do it right now. Yeah, I don't think he could but do it. It was there. <laughs> <laughs> I think they knew it. Yeah, he's breathing hard. If you throw, just throw a quick out. <laughs> just get, said, I'm, I'll get it back. Take a deep breath. Here we go. That's <laughs> right, Coach. I can still get it done here, man. Left foot. Bam. That familiar stance of Hill. Fakes it. Rolls out to the right. Fires it in. Touchdown, Eric Olsen. should just kick this and not think about going for two right now, Brent. Well, they've got David Napier in there to do just that, Dick. I'll tell you one thing I'm seeing. This team doesn't lack heart. No, they don't. And, it, and Coach Lubick has said that all week since we've been here. They are believers. So Anthony Hill, his run set it up. And then the man who blocked for him downfield, Eric Olson from San Marcos, California, works his way free, and watch how he clutches the ball after the catch. He's right in the slot, and you'll note that they went zone coverage. No one picked him up man-to-man, -man, and didn't you notice that little signal? We'll show that to you again, ladies and gentlemen. That was really well done. He knew what the coverage was. He knew what should happen, so he signaled the quarterback to get me the football. This is the big play that made it all possible when Anthony Hill broke free on third and eight and ran 62 yards before Boyd got him out of bounds as he was going down the tightrope. Actually, he would have carried himself out of bounds. Boyd didn't have a whole lot to do with it. Then he came back, communicated with Olsen. They hit it for the touchdown, and it is back to two again, the <laughs> safety being the difference. McCoy and the Utes in the teeth of this crowd here in Fort Collins going back to work. My, oh my, this has been a good one here this afternoon. I hope you're enjoying it right along with us. Take one more look at that touchdown. I'll show you what I was talking about. They lined up as if they were going to go man-to-man -man coverage, showed it, and then went zone. First and ten, the ball we'll at the 20-yard line. Juan Johnson, who was injured last week, was leading Hamilton, and he was crushed by the CSU defense. Steve Hodge, number 46, led the charge that time. The little intricacies in coaching. It looks like man-to-man -man right here. They don't go man-to-man. -man. Watch him buzz out and go zone. All right, now watch your receiver. Freeze it right there. See, he's got his hands up. He said, listen, it's zone. Get me the ball quickly. They do it. It's a touchdown. Good coaching. Second down and 12. Charlie Brown back in, and McCoy trying to change up here with the noise becoming a factor. Now McCoy, quick drop, throws incomplete. Oh, they blew the coverage and turned the tight end Marston loose. No one's on him. He can't believe they didn't see it. No one was on him. They have a five-pack in there, five defensive backs, and they blew the coverage, and Marston's tight end was all alone. Things... And Oregon 
doing a job on Washington. Meanwhile, Michigan leading Illinois as Toomer scores their first touchdown on a long punt return. Third down and 12. Now they're in that stretch formation from sideline to sidelines trying to really stretch that zone defense. Devon Hawkins. I'll tell you, those kids are playing their hearts out, Brent. You can just feel it from up here. They're as excited as the fans are. They feel they're taking control of the ball game, gaining the momentum, and they are pumped. And so is Devon Hawkins, who just made the sack. They're tough on quarterbacks. 27 sacks. Pull. Jason Jones drops back in punt formation. Greg Myers is set to return. They're returning. I'm not trying to rush it. Yeah, they're going to get good field position here this situation anyway. Here's Myers. Myers to midfield. Half the field to play with. They did not want to risk a roughing penalty. There is a penalty flag down, probably a face mask on the far side. That would figure to help CSU in this situation. So now Anthony Hill, who turned this game completely around on third and eight when he ran 62 yards, now has half a field to play with. Just what you want in this situation. What they don't want to do, though, Brent, is do anything different than what they have been doing. Just be patient and move the football. If the big play could come again once again on his scramble. The playmaker will bring him up inside the 45-yard line. 7.28 to go in the third. Utah leads by two. And now the play has been held up by the officials. bit of a communication problem down there on the field and now they get the clock going 25 second clock well underway even though the game clock doesn't start until the snap on first and ten here's Hill launching one wants Olsen Olsen he can't finish Garrett Normally when they go deep, they go deep to Donovan Burks, number eight. Instead, they go the other way. You can see him grab him right there. He had to do that or it might have been a touchdown. The Colorado State coaches are saying we must score in the third quarter. We've got, We've the, got win the wind at our back, and we must not play catch-up football in the fourth quarter. They figured now was the time to strike. They went for it. And they'll get a 15-yarder here that'll put that ball now inside the 30-yard line with plenty of time left in the third quarter for Sonny Lubeck and the Colorado State Rams. WAC officials headed by referee Bill McCabe. And Anthony Hill comes in from the sideline getting clarification. And here comes clarification for the rest of us. Pass interference. 15-yard penalty against the defense. First down. I thought maybe he was going to tell us something more dramatic. Right. Than that. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, but I didn't want to say it in the air. Yeah. What took so long? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, let's walk the football off and let's get on with it. Now the ball just inside the 30-yard line now for Hill and the Rams. State running back. On the draw, it's Ward, explodes to the middle. Ward, first down, close to the 15-yard line, and Jason Hooks bringing him down. They have done a good job of running against that odd man front defense all day with that same specific play, Brent. <laughs> Run off the charge of the big Luther Ellis. See, now the nose guard's right here in front of, of the quarterback. They're going to run off that block. 
Now, Mark Donnelly, the right guard, 63, does a nice job. See, big hole. He reads it up there. Not a physical play, a finesse play, but a good play. Colorado State inside the 20, first and 10. Three wide receivers and E.J. Watson, the running back, as they shuttle backs in and out. It's E.J. and it's Luther Ellis coming from the back. He Number 83 ran him down, Coach. He showed some quickness there, Brent, because he came around from the backside. Actually, the wrong side of the block. He came around it and down it and made the play. He's a big, strong, strong man. 6'6", 288. And when you stand next to him, ladies and gentlemen, he looks bigger than that. And what an ounce of fat on him, Brent. Yeah, good looking. Strongest man on the team. Wouldn't you say good looking on the hook? Yeah. I thought I, was, I thought I was buying cattle, folks. Well, in this area, that's what you think. Second and ten. It looks like blitz. Now they back it off. And Hill. Now we're trying to clear it again. And he's cut off this time. That was Mark Rexford who defended him. Good job by Hill, though. See, he doesn't want to turn the ball over. He was tempted to throw the ball. He tried to pump it to keep the defense off him to allow him to give him some running room but he didn't want to throw. Topside receiver was open, but see, he's running the other way, and he can't get back looking back to see this guy. See, they're scrambling around trying to get open. Good decision. It's 11 yards for a first down. Third and 11. Colorado State spreads the defense out low with four receivers. Look and they pitch it out now to Renard Karn, number 40. And he is out of bounds at the 11-yard line. You would think the Colorado State would go for the go-ahead field goal. Renard Karn is a junior out of Oxnard. He has not played very much, but they've got some people banged up. He comes in. That's his 15th carry on the year. On the year. Now David Napier in a situation to put the Rams ahead. To gamble at this situation, Dick, uh, you don't have the odds no. in your favor on fourth and four. No, you don't. You just go ahead and play good common sense football here, and hopefully he makes it. This is a 28-yarder. Colorado State leads it. It's their first lead of the game. You know, he was lucky to make that because that snap was not handled cleanly in place cleanly. There was a little bobble in that, but he maintained his blessed discipline and he kicked it through. See that ball right there? You're still making great lasagna. My son is making it now. I'll tell you, a while back, I didn't think there'd be a restaurant for him. This place? It's always busy. Well, that wasn't the problem, because everything else was insurance and health plans. My guy, Payne Weaver, he helped me out with all that. A stock problem. He yes, even set us up with a 401k. I guess you must really know how important this place is to your family. Yeah. Because he took the time to ask. Right like this, it's the car of your dreams. PageNet, America's number one wireless messaging company, is proud to sponsor the 125th anniversary of college football. Since the days of leather caps and broken teeth, the game has come a long way. But it's still a game of contact. And who knows more about contact than PageNet, the company that keeps more people in close contact nationwide. CFA College Football on ABC, brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We are driving excitement. And the beer that's colder, bolder, yet smooth as ice, Molson Ice from Canada, the land where ice was born. Every view's a postcard. The old Horse and Tooth Reservoir. Oh, yeah, this little town, they still got outdoor movie theaters over there, folks. <laughs> Look who's starring this week. Boy, 
Coach, Honey Lubick. I'll tell you this, they're lined up to buy his tickets, too. I'll tell you that. This man's not. Coach McBride says, get him off the screen, man. <laughs> so there's the kickoff down to the Utes. It's tapped, fielded at the 10-yard line by Lusk. And Lusk on a cutback, brings it out beyond the 30-yard line. John Saunders, how about the Crimson Tide? They're being shut out, weren't they, at halftime? Absolutely correct, Brent. 10-0 was the score when they went to the locker rooms, but first and goal here at the two. Sherman Williams muscles his way across. Alabama on the board. 10-7, though. They still trail. Brent. John, it's interesting. Crimson Tide, unbeaten. May pull this one out. Haven't been overly impressive, but they just kind of keep hanging in the neighborhood, don't they? Speaking of Alabama and the unbeatens, there they are, folks. There's nine of them. We're watching two of them right here today. And down the road, another one going to go to work a little bit later this afternoon against Kansas State. Colorado. Good solid chance for a national championship. But don't discount the Nittany Lions of Penn State. Charlie Brown is the Utah running back. First and ten. Now McCoy to put it up. Steps off to his left, has a receiver, got him. First down and a penalty flag. There could be a holding call and that would bring the gain on back. Boy, when it goes bad, it all goes bad. McBride standing there evaluating this whole thing, both physically and mentally. Yeah. Holding. Ten-yard penalty against the defense from the spot of the foul. Jack Aroot, what's the move down there, partner? Well, Brent, you know, one of the things we saw early on, you talked about this emotional crowd. Well, maybe the Colorado State team was a little bit off in the beginning with that safety. But now the team is responding to the crowd. But let's not forget one thing. Right behind me here in this section is the Utah Utes as well. And the one thing, Brent, that I'm most impressed with by both teams and both crowds, no matter what fan you are, they know this is an excellent football game and they're appreciative of the effort by both sides. Jack, right now the Utes uh, face a first and 27. After that holding penalty is assessed, the ball resting on the 15-yard line, 5.17 to go, and uh, we can remind you Monday night, we'll go back to the vet. When the season began, everybody thought the Oilers might be a contender in the AFC Central. They have struggled. That always makes them dangerous, but perhaps going on the road to Philadelphia will make it tough. I know that Jack Pardee and the coaches were impacted by the floods, which hit Houston, and we certainly hope that that situation is a lot better than what we saw on the news earlier last week. It'll be at 9 o'clock Eastern time here on ABC. The Oilers and the Eagles. Randall Cunningham. He's had some great games this year. Hey, Brett, now we've seen everything. Sometimes you see it in the pros. I can't remember the last time we saw this. The scoreboard clocks here are messed up. So the referee's been over talking to the press box. They're going to wipe it back down to zero, and they're going to keep the score on the field, keep the time on the field. So that means, Jack, you stay close to that timer down there, partner. And uh... Hey, man, I flunked math. I can't help you there. <laughs> <laughs> now they're explaining to uh, Coach Lubick. This is all a conspiracy to keep my stats man, George Hill, from making his airplane. <laughs> He's got to go to Philly to help the uh, ABC coverage on uh, money. They want you to stay in town, George, and uh, help celebrate here in Fort Collins. Always happy for a little extra business. This is a lovely town. One thing we've got to say about the school, first school this year to pick up a dinner check, Colorado State. <laughs> yeah. We love them. Oh, we love them. Oh, when they do High that. our list. That's great. <laughs> You know, the down four, I've mentioned this a couple times already, Brent, but those four down linemen have really been tenacious. Well, now, 27 yards. The Utah Utes need here, working against the wind, trailing it by a point. Crowd alive at Fort Collins, hit on the release, and now it'll be second and 27. And that was Mr. Steve Hodge, who has come alive big time in this game. And he is the leader. He is the tempo setter, as we said earlier. Just a good power, quick rush guy. He was a running back in high school, Brent. And here he is playing defensive tackle and loves every minute of it. 
How about that guy that drove his car out here from New York to walk on and slept in it, didn't have any money? Carl and, Ballard. Wow. Actually started last week as the inside linebacker. He really did. I tell you. Now they move Marsh out. An empty pack. They're going to throw it anyhow. McCoy takes a short drop, has man on man, goes to him, he's got him at midfield and down at the 40-yard line. That was a touchdown saving tackle on Curtis March by Scott Lynch, who caught him. He could have busted free for the score. See, they did a great job of defeating the two deep zones. Scott Lynch was just a step or two late of getting over there on the sideline fate pattern. You'll see the green jersey, the right side there, they don't roll up on him. He goes on down there playing zone. The safety right there is frozen by the man in the slot. He doesn't get there. Big play down the sideline. That's how you have to attack that zone defense. The ball is inside the Colorado State 45. It's a 41-yard gain with Charlie Brown now back in. Utah moving against the wind. They'll have it at their back in the fourth quarter. They trail it by a point. And it's Brown. Huge hole left side. Brown will score. They won't catch him. Utah has the lead back. Very, very good block by Lance Scott in the middle of the line, Brent. He turned the nose tackle right there. I think they were in an odd defense, and he read it and popped right up inside. Nice run by Charlie. Right up the middle, right at good blocks by that big Lance Scott inside there, and it's quickness. He takes it home. They should go for two here. Yeah, they're going for two. This is their first two-point attempt this year. Rob Hamilton Dick is in that backfield, and they'll show shotgun, and they move now. Look at this. Holy mackerel. Look at this formation they're going to line up in. Here is their two-point play for Coach McBride. They bring it in motion. They ought to call timeout. They got him wide open. Hamilton for two. <laughs> Credit Rick Rasnick, the offensive coordinator, for coming up with something I haven't seen. <laughs> if I were on defense, I'd have called timeout. Say, wait a minute. <laughs> I you love can't it. can't do that. That's not legal. I love it. <laughs> Folks, this is the first play all year that Dick Vermeil hasn't expected. Hey, Brent, will you explain this one for me? I've never seen it before. <laughs> what would you call it? <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you what it is when you're in Central Park. You say, you go over there, you come here, you break to the right, we'll get you open up, we'll throw the ball to you. <laughs> Rick Rasmussen, you know they, they, they got that play? They got that play from one of the fraternities back in school, I, I man. That's so. they use the touch lead. Yeah, well, maybe that touch game we saw there on the field. Is. <laughs> That's right. Take a look right now. Middle, middle of your screen, 56. Lance Scott does a nice job, turns him in there. There's good blocking on the linebackers. They can't make the... To play, he gets that good burst up inside. And Greg Myers, the safety, doesn't make the tackle. I wonder if my buddy Rick Majerus back in Salt Lake's enjoying this one. You're getting ready with that basketball team. Boy, I tell you, you get Majerus and Coach McBride in that same town, you don't have any trouble getting some anecdotes out of the coaches <laughs> yeah, around this I know that. Group. Well, we get word that there's over four minutes left here in the third, and suddenly it's gotten even wilder out here. It's 24-17, Utah back in the lead. You know, Utah all year has been a very explosive second-half offensive team, especially in the fourth quarter. Pulls over to kick it off. Burkett and Ward back deep. This is Ward. He's at seven and coming out. Surrounded. Puts it down. Utah's got it. Whew. Holy mackerel. Number 42, Kenny Buss, a linebacker from Cedarburg, Wisconsin. Here's the third string running back carrying the ball. He's got it locked up properly right there. He gets into that big pile, and it's just stripped out of there and knocked out of there by the man that recovered it. He knocked it out. Nice job by Kenny Buss.
First and ten for Utah. The ball is inside the 20. Boy, I tell you. Woo! <laughs> How fast it has turned. In Don't this let game. anybody ever criticize the WAC conference to us again, man. Oh, I'll tell you, it's great. All right, when he's six. I remember seeing that formation now, that two point formation. Tommy Protro ran it one time. He called it Formation Zero. He ran it against the San Francisco 49ers going inside the red zone, and we scored with it. In fact, I was his offensive coordinator, and I didn't have guts enough to call it, so he called it. <laughs> I'll remind you that uh, tomorrow night on ABC, all new funniest videos, followed by new episodes of On Our Own and Lois and Clark, then Arnold's back. Here he comes. <laughs> One of his Terminator 2 on the Sunday night movie tomorrow on ABC. And uh, you know what he says? Let me get for me. <laughs> I want for me. <laughs> Put a mustache on me. 4-11. Left here in the third quarter. 24-17. Now they're explaining that here to McBride and you know, I asked Coach McBride yesterday, Ron, uh, what's really, really happened to your program? He said, well, Dick, each year our coaching staff had asked our players to give us just a little bit more. And you know something? They've done it five years in a row, and this is by far my best football team. They're really giving kids. They just give what they've got. They're demonstrating that out there right now. You know, and he's that kind of personality that can pull that out of kids. You know, he's a motivator. He, he can get you fired up. Just talking with him yesterday. You and I said, hey, let's go play. Well, he got things all sorted out here. Steps inside the 15-yard line with Andre Strode. That was a nice move. He stopped in the backfield. Brady Smith had good penetration, the defensive right end, and he just balanced up his base, widened his feet, and bounced right outside and, and makes four yards. Good running. Second down and six for the Utes. Juan Johnson in the game. and McCoy's going to throw it. Now he's going to run out of trouble, and he is tackled at the 12 by Steve Hodge. Oh, how football has changed now through the years. And, and the McCoy is not given credit for being this mobile and quick, but he has great awareness, and he has tremendous patience in there. I thought he should have scrambled much sooner, and he just waits. Here's the Dick Vermeil playing era. No, folks, this is the 1925. Now, now look at don't those jerseys remind you of what the Chicago Bears? The throwback uniform. But where was the leather helmets? Come on. Here we go now. Third down and four from McCoy and the Utes. They're coming after him. He sees it. Incomplete, it's called. Kevin Dyson should have had it and oh, may yeah. have taken a step. When we he, look at that a replay, it may look like he caught the ball. He, he might have had it long enough, but I'll tell you, it, he might have heard footsteps. That they had a guy coming right down his throat. They went, they blitzed the outside people. You're going to see him coming in here. Should get tight coverage right there. It's going to come in. Excuse me, the outside guy, number one, right there. Now he's going to close on him. Boy, he might have had that a step, right? Let's see. Well, here comes the field goal attempt. They'll be trying to block this one. Danny Pulsifer to attempt a 29-yarder here, and a penalty flag comes flying. If that happens to be against Colorado State, it'll give Utah a first down. It is. Oh, baby. What a costly what a penalty that is. Dumb mistake. Oh, my. Five-yard penalty against the defense. First down. 
Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh, Christmas oh. comes early, Coach. This could be the one that does it when they look back on it, Coach. This oh. is really critical. Give them a first and goal inside that 10-yard line. Yeah, and the block punt. Now they give them this. They put it down there just close to the 7-yard line. So far, though, they have not allowed adversity to bother them. They just buckle up and play harder. Need a play now. Defense has to come up big against McCoy and the Utes. Here's the toss play. Oh, Brown nice tackle. Is hit by Ragsdale. Was that a nice tackle or was that a nice tackle? Excellent job of fundamental football right there. If you're a high school linebacker watching this game today, you can model a tackle after Ragsdale's hit this time. Tossed it to him. He'll flash from the right side of your screen. Wham! Look at that. See? Bend those knees. Helmet up. Extend that back. Love it. Pure ecstasy for Coach Reveal. tackles. That's what it's all about. Good coaching, too. So, second down and go. All at the five-yard line. I knew the coach would get credit before a long time. They stay right here with this one. Well, Larry Kerr coaches those linebackers. You, you drill that stuff all the time, but you don't get to see it done perfectly very often. What do you think McBride might do down here with his offense? Well, after seeing that last two-point play, I don't think I'll guess. <laughs> <laughs> Raymond. Coach Mack, I tell you, he has always been an innovative offensive line coach through all those years. Hey, listen, remember we go down to Tucson, Tucson. and they play Fumble Ruski? He caused he the rule to be changed. Changed it. He's the guy. He's down it. Oh, those wonderful scenes around here, the rodeo grounds. Wait a minute. Arut, what are you doing out there? You know, guys, you've sent me on some incredible missions, I'm telling you. But this is the scene of the college rodeos the Skyline Stampede. And I tell you what, there's a great... Baby, didn't he run with the Buffalo he up there? He ran real well for an all-offensive center. He ran pretty well. I'm telling you what, man. There's <laughs> nothing that he hasn't attempted in Colorado. <laughs> well, we haven't seen him tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby, you got to love it. Second down and goal from the five-yard line. We get word that it's two minutes and 14 seconds left. If we're lucky, they'll finish it by midnight. <laughs> it's 24-17, and Utah trying to get another one. Three receivers out to the left. Coming after him, and they're going to run Brown, and nothing doing as Brady Smith Brady was there. Smith. Nice job by Brady Smith. He leads the whack, as we said earlier, in sacks. Now he ends up making a nice tackle. Comes from a great stock. His dad played football at the University of Michigan in 10 years in the National Football League, Brent. Dick, this is a very, very impressive goal line stand oh, here. Yeah. These kids have such character. Now, Utah, third down. Oh, here, here comes, comes that again. Play. Here comes formation the zero. Formation zero. See, now throw it out to the guy. Watch him throw it out there behind the... Nope, they're not going to. Bringing him in motion. This time the corner stays at home. They look back now to the screen. They throw it for a touchdown. Holy cow, Rick Tucker scores on the screen off formation zero. My gosh. Get our spotter. Let him describe this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the A. Hey. Oh, Coach McBride. Those San Jose State guys are really bright offensive coaches. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Unbelievable. Remember, for a long time, this looked like a low-scoring game. Yeah, yeah. Extra point is good for Pulsifer, and suddenly it is 31-17, and Utah with some daylight. Now watch them shift. They get a full overload situation all the way up on top with two eligible receivers. The outside guy and the back guy, both are eligible. The back guy comes in motion. Now they have a two-man screen. They throw it to Tucker. They get a block downfield by John. That's Brown. Touchdown. Why did I think about that? What a good-looking play that is. <laughs> because now they now keep in mind that they have used a man in motion coming back for two. They curled it off into the right side. Yeah. Now they've thrown back to the man on the outside. Take another look at this. Yeah. Here he is. Here's the eligible receiver right there. 
He comes back. They're he, getting, he's just outnumbered. What oh, yeah. should they do defensively against this formation? <laughs> <laughs> I love it when you're speechless. I love it. <laughs> I don't know, coach. <laughs> I'll ask Jack a root out there. <laughs> I know it is. I called timeout. Yeah, they could have done that. I called timeout. Burkett and Ward are back to return, and now Colorado State badly in need of some big plays. Here comes Ward. Ward with a crease out to the 28-yard line. Well, one thing we know with a minute 30 to go in the third, the Colorado State kids not about to quit in this baby. No way. They've just self-destructed. They need a couple of quick scores. And, of course, next Saturday we've got more action coming your way. This state will be watching that. You don't have to remind them of what's ahead. That's the showdown. That should be the winner goes on to the Orange Bowl, shouldn't it? Penn State, meanwhile, trying to drive to the Rose Bowl. And uh, call your cable operators pay-per-view. And Hill's going to put it right back on up to Olsen. And Olsen is out of bounds at the 41-yard line. I think he's going to be attacking... Uh a Utah zone coverage now, which is not their basic way to play football. But with this type of a situation, 14-point lead going into the fourth quarter, they, they can be a little bit more conservative with their calls. Well, last week we watched Auburn having put the tight end into their game plan for Florida. Today we come up with formation zero on the part of Utah. First and ten, the draw play. And this is Karn. Karn running for another first down. Tough they, run. They haven't stopped, stopped that draw play one time. The inside linebacker is going to have to make that play. It isn't that tough. He must be getting out of there much too quick. They, you can run it off a lineman and get up in there, but a linebacker should fill that. Max Resford right there, number 55, should make that play right there. See, he doesn't make it. He's a little bit late getting there. Colorado State into Utah territory. The ball is at the Utes 47-yard line. And there is Karn, who has given him a good look here in the backfield. Hill straight back over the middle. Wide open. And that is Terrence Zeno. He's only caught two balls coming into here. But see, they went to that pure zone. He ran up there. He ran, turned in the inside and just slid to the open. Good pass protection, though. That took a little time to develop. Good pass sets right there. He gets it right in that little zone hole behind the linebacker. Now he's a running back with the ball. 23 more yards for Zeno and the Rams. They're inside Utah's 25-yard line with the seconds ticking away here on the third quarter. Scoreboard clock has broken. We're unable to give you the official time, which is being kept by one of the officials down on the field right now. Karn bangs for a couple, but no more. Now let's get an update on the Huskies. They had their hands full against Oregon. John Saunders. They did for a time, Brent, but here third and two. Still harbored a chance and a dream of winning the WAC this year. Brigham Young, though, probably is pulling for Utah to get this W against Colorado State. The Rams have already beaten BYU, but Utah and BYU don't play until later. And we're back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. I don't need some fancy computer across town. And I asked them when they were going to be doing this, and they said in about three hours. So I was able to not only provide the coverage and issue the certificate to the owner of the computer, but to make sure that it was covered. And this is one of the things that keeps the insurance business interesting. Nationally, the market for trucks is exploding, and Utah has always been truck country. In response, we at Menlob intend to stock Utah's largest inventory of both Dodge and Toyota trucks. We already sell more Toyota trucks than anyone in Utah, and we want the same position for Dodge. We have a larger inventory. We own everything at our store. It costs us less to do business. We can sell for less. Keep us in mind. That's Men Love Dodge Toyota in Battleville, still the last of the little guys growing with Utah. They watch the world's most popular show, Sunday at 4 on 4 Utah. Some 
great scenes here in Fort Collins. Pretty soon we'll get Jack Aruth to go out there after that. See if he can retrieve it for us. Second down now an eight. Scoreboard clock is operating. Final 15 minutes. Utah 31. Colorado State 17. The Rams are driving right now as we start the final 15 minutes. Anthony Hill backfires. Olsen got it five yard line. First and goal. Colorado State. Boy, with that man-to-man -man coverage, you should do everything you can as a corner not to allow him to get underneath you and inside. And Lurie, who's played a real good football game, allows Olsen to get back inside on that coverage. When you don't have help inside, you prefer not to let him get there. Van Ward checks into the lineup for the Rams. Olsen and Zeno go out to the left. Burkett is down to the right. Ward is the running back now on first and goal. Two receivers go block the defenders that are covering them one-on-one, -on -one, and he just pitches it out, and no one on him. He comes right down. See, they don't block the end man in the line of scrimmage. They flip it out. The two men that were in the slot are blocking their defenders downfield, and he takes it in for the score. They should kick this one. They should kick this one here. Napier on the field to do just that. This would leave them within seven. Could be returned, remember. Lust coming out, and he'll be tackled on that far side. That was a very, very low kick, Brent. And that was also a huge moment in this game as Kafusi was able to get in there again. He blocked a field goal. Now he does it to an extra point. He leaves him at an eight-point disadvantage. See, and now they don't have a choice if they score again for that two-point conversion attempt. See? Again, it was a low kick. Kafusi getting up real high in the middle there, number 99, but it was below him. Could have hit him in the belly button. There's Mr. Kafusi. He walked on here, came out of Dixie Junior College, 15 sacks out of Junior College, East High School. Actually, it was his brother, Henry, that walked on before. Got a lot of members of his family in Utah. A lot of push-ups down there by the... Uh, by the guardsmen, huh? Every point. They got everything in this conference. The guys that shoot the cannon, they do push-ups. Keep in good shape, Coach. Yeah. Never can tell when Wyoming might invade Colorado. <laughs> Let's see what's going to happen here on this uh, on this kickoff. They're setting up like it, juggling the formation and just changing sides is what they're doing. They're trying to hide some of the speed coming down the field. The way things have gone, who knows? Maybe we'll see an early onside kick. You wouldn't think so, but uh, we are in the whack. Curtis Marsh is back deep with Cal Beck, and Napier has the ball on the tee. It's an eight-point Utah lead, 31 to 23. Short kickoff. From the 15, it's fumbled by Beck. Down at the 16-yard line. Jack Aroot. Hey, Brent, do you see the outfit on head coach Ron McBride? You see the way he's decked out? Well, he's been wearing that outfit since the beginning of the season. You see, he's one of those superstitious type coaches and will continue to wear the same clothing as long as his team is winning. Now, he told me a couple of days ago, yesterday, that one time it went so far as he had a blue suit and they were on an unbeaten streak and they had to wear that blue suit to BYU. You know the colors of BYU, they're blue. He said, we lost and I finally got to take a shower. I'm going to see if I can save him a stall when I go get cleaned up. <laughs> Wondered why he was so all alone on the team bus this morning. No, no. McCoy snaps one off down to the hands of Claiborne. Claiborne makes his way to the 23-yard line. And you know, you're talking about Coach McBride. He has a great philosophy. They call it the Ma-Fu philosophy, Brent. Ma-Fu, believe that or not. What does that mean, man? Well, it means mental toughness for the end, 
A is for aggressiveness, F is for fanatical effort, and U is for unity. That's McBride's Mafu philosophy. <laughs> Mafu leading 31-23 right now. Here's McCoy down the middle. Almost intercepted. He had Kozlowski right there. And uh, Dave is the kind of kid that normally makes those kind of catches. You know, he's a good, tough possession receiver. They read the coverage perfectly. It was the zone coverage, double zone down there, and he threw it for just, you know, you can't throw it any better. He just got to make the catch. Yeah, some way Bama finds a way, and it's Sherman Williams who rattles it in there. Washington doing the same. Oregon hanging tough at home. Oh, the season went bad for UCLA after all those injuries, didn't it? It sure did. Syracuse leads Temple by a couple of scores. Now it is third and three for Utah. Big defensive play here for the Rams. McCoy might not have it. No. They have forced the punt. Garrett Sand, number 30, making another strong effort here for the Rams. Well, Sonny Lubick said the key for them to be successful today was tackle receivers after they catch it. And boy, they've done a good job of that, Brent. Just a good hard smack right there prevented the first down. Everybody hang on. Jason Jones punting again, and Myers back to return. linebacker that got it number 41 or a defensive lineman Woo! no excuses for getting so many punts blocked what did Eric Persigan coach for how many years and never had one block there it is Ross number 41 coming right up the gut see when you turn people loose like that they're gonna get a block that's not the punter's fault Adrian Ross doing a nice nice job now Colorado State can strike quickly here in the fourth. 12.56 to go, down by eight. Three wide receivers. Cairn into the middle, plows straight ahead for two, three yards. Jason, I can't believe we're seeing so many punts blocked. You mentioned the key point about Aaron Parsegan's career. Through all his days, head coach at Miami, Northwestern, Notre Dame, he never, ever had a single punt block. It's a remarkable statistic. It is. But he is. The ratio in the National Football League is about one every 125 punts is blocked. You, you know what Coach... that today. You know what Coach McBride said after that block punt? Yeah. I, can't, I can't repeat it on the air. I'm off food. I'm off food, yeah. <laughs> Second down and seven now inside center pass. And they bust it to the one-yard line goes Van Ward. First and goal, the Rams. That's a real well-conceived play and much easier to run from that type of formation, Brent. See, he's back there. He moves parallel to the line of scrimmage, off the line of scrimmage. The offensive tackle sets deep. You'll see him right here now. The right offensive tackle, 77, will... Rogowski will set deep. They flip it right up inside there. Let that defensive end get up in there. Well done. I'll tell you who invented it was Utah. Didn't right. Lee Gross Cup design that play originally? Yes, now he did. First Jack Curtis. Goal. Jack Curtis was his coach. And Ward's the running back. Ward up over the top. Just short. They unpile them. The linesman coming down the line now, and this would make a second and goal. You've got to believe with Hill's ability to run that he can make it happen down here. A typical wild one in the whack. Second and goal, and Karn the running back this time. Hill over the top, he's smacked by the middle of that defense. Woo! He was hit head on quickly. Mark Rexford helping out on that play. Boy, I tell you, they drove his helmet right down into his shoulder pads. Boy, he popped them quick. Jeff Kafusi was there. Look at him, he's a, where am I? Holy mackerel, did he get popped. 
the right side of your screen, you see the linebacker. Wham! Nice job by Rexford. They're better off probably handling it off tackle over here to the left. Now Van Ward comes in off the Colorado State sideline. Lubick's team needing a touchdown, trailing it by 8, 10, 57 to go. It's third and goal. Decision now. Go no for two. Decision. No decision. Gotta go to go two. for two. Go for two. Let's see if they can come up with a formation zero play. <laughs> They're one for one in two point conversions this year. They ran it in. Three yards can be tough against this defense. Oh, you bet. With a mobile quarterback, chances are you ought to get him on the corner, Brent. Get him outside. Now they put it down on the left hash mark. Looks like they're going to bring a guy in motion by how they lined up over here. They bring him toward the right hand. Yeah, He's outnumbered defensively on this side. Already Utah has more defenders, far more on the left side of the formation, as time had run out on the play. Oh, what a mistake this is. This is going to cost Lubick five yards. And it, you go to a different, totally different kind of offensive play now. There's Coach Lay right there, David Lay. He's upset that they didn't get it off. See, but now you go away from a two-point type play to a, a red zone type pass inside the 10-yard line. Maybe a little bit easier to execute in certain situations. Well, it certainly gives a receiver on a slant pattern a little more room to cut it inside and if they roll hill on the outside they're lining up the same way get. lining up the same way as they did before let's see if they bring the man in motion yeah here he comes in motion hill now going to roll back to the left side and yeah. throw the tight end for the deuce justin Shaw, very well conceived play they rolled away from the strength of the formation gave him the fake to the strength brent Again, misdirection being very effective. All you can say is, welcome to the WAC. Wow. Look at the size of this place. A guy who didn't know what he was doing could sure get himself in a lot of trouble here. But hey, I'm sure you'll pick one out. I mean, how hard could it be? Like these guys. They used to make a heck of a movie projector. And anyway, if something does go wrong, I'm sure a handy guy like you, you can probably just fix it yourself. But as long as you're here, maybe you ought to just look at an IBM. Familiar is blue jean. Fielded at the 24-yard line. And written down at the 30 goes LaPelle. They did a real good job on this misdirection play. They start it one way. Now, a little bit after that, the linebacker who was assigned to the tight end, Kirkman, got into it with Whittingham over the coverage. See, he was locked onto the tight end who caught the two-point play, man. Seen on that Utah sideline. First and ten now for McCoy and the Utes. Completes a first down pass for four yards to Rob Hamilton out of the backfield. Here's that two-point conversion. They send the man in motion right here. All right, and then they start the misdirection. See, and they'll face it now. Now, he got the freeze it right there. You'll see the tight end blocking right here on the linebacker. Now he'll be released underneath. There he goes. He throws him off. And there he is. Well conceived play. Very, very, very tough to defense. Second and six now for Utah. Draw play. Brown. Still moving down at the 35. It'll be third and five. Andre Strode with the stop. The one thing he doesn't want to do is fumble it. He was carrying the ball with both hands wrapped around it. 
Charlie did not want to turn that one over. Here he is coming right at us. Deep back there. The hand off the draw. He bounces to the right. Look at both hands wrapped on that foot. But tough to run real good with both hands wrapped on it. You need one free, but he was being real cautious. Score by quarters. Look at that. 32 points in the third quarter. Third and five. McCoy, first down. Claiborne across to the 43-yard line with 9-10 to go. The Utes on the move. You know, they've tried that play about three or four different times, completed it. It was one that the uh, receiver dropped a few minutes ago, different receiver this time, and he almost ran that pattern as if he knew what was going to be there because he caught the ball and made the man miss him as soon as he caught the football. Good anticipation by Deer uh, Claiborne. from behind by Hawkins. He looked like he was offsides. I really think he was offsides. Hawkins is quick. I think Hawkins was the guy that was offsides on that field goal attempt, too. But he's quick. He's a redshirt freshman. Here he is, number 74. I thought he was moving. And in the inside there, let's, yeah, he is. <laughs> he's quick, but I think he was just a hair quicker. Second down and 12 as the linesman doesn't pick it up. for Charlie Brown, who was the additional wide receiver. Boy, when they get you spread all over the field like that, Brent, and, and, and you're playing zone defense, it's not too hard. Now, number 23 is in the slot. Charlie Brown, he's the running back. See, now he's letting him clear out, and he comes underneath it. See, and they just pop him the football. Actually, one of the defenders fell down, or he might have been right there in his face. The ball at the Colorado State 41-yard line. Just inside of eight minutes to go. Deadlocked at 31. Now they run the toss with Brown. Brown tried to find the left corner, and it was a good tackle by Smith. Real nice job by Brady Smith. He's 6'6", 240, playing on a guy 6'5", 320. is big enough to eat hay and does a real good job on him. Right here. Watch this matchup right here. Takes a kid with a lot of guts. Keep his pads down right there. Now watch him work inside out. That's a big man he's playing on. He comes off it and gets involved and make the play. Nice job by Brady Smith. Ooh, big difference there. McCoy slips him. It's Marsh. Penalty flag. Marsh to the 22-yard line. You know, Marsh is their big playmaker, but we haven't mentioned his name much today. They haven't gotten him the football. He came in here with seven touchdowns on the season. And Holding brings that one back. Boy, big penalty. When you're coaching and you're on the road and you see these holding penalties go against you, you say, oh gosh, do I wish I was playing at home? <laughs> you can't help but not have that feeling as a coach. You can call holding so often in a ball game nowadays with the, how they allow people to use their hands and extend them like that. It, seemed, it just seems like they've had too many go against Utah. Well, a reminder that our Monday night game between Houston and Philadelphia will start at 9 Eastern time here on ABC. Right now we have a second and 16. Four wide receivers for McCoy. Brown is his running back. McCoy fires Kozlowski inside the 30 for a first down. Now you know, they had a real good pass rush on him too, Brent, but he has that feel to slide up in the little crease that he could find a passing lane and throw the ball downfield. I am very impressed with Mike McCoy under pressure. I can see why he is throwing for 6,900 and something yards coming into this ball game. I'll tell you, one of the things that's happened here in the second half is how the wind has died down a little bit. It has blown itself out, what, what there was of it. 6.30 to go now. That little breeze is at Utah's back here in the final quarter. Ball inside Colorado State's 30. 
Nice Tripped job. up at the 26. Brady Smith again, number 91 here in He's the fourth quarter. Playing his guts out. Just a junior. He'll be back next year. How'd they ever let him get out of Illinois? Burlington, Illinois. The oh, Illini gosh. trying to come back on Michigan. They yeah. just got another touchdown, so they're hey. in hot pursuit. And there Illinois is the a good Bears. football team. Illinois, we've seen them. We've seen them play very well. Barrington, Illinois, horse country. That's why I want to come out here. Second down at nine. Charlie Brown, the running back. And it's McCoy for Marston. At the 20-yard line, Derek Marston makes his first catch, lined up at tight end on the left side of the formation. Garrett Sand with the stop. Rick Rasnick told me the offensive coordinator for Utah and coming in there they plan to use Marston a little bit more because he also has the ability to go out and be a wide receiver he's one of those quick big tight ends and they can vary formations without substituting with that man in there Dick interesting situation it's third and two at the it's right down by the Colorado State 20 yard line Rob Hamilton is the running back four wide receivers they're coming after him throw against it. First down, Claiborne inside the 15-yard line. Boy, they blitzed it. They had the tight coverage. Good little slant look in. I'm not so sure that isn't a hot receiver principle, Brent. When they see the linebacker disappear inside, the inside slot receiver just slam inside and they try to pop him the football. I think McCoy here, Mr. McCoy, is going to play for a long time on Sunday afternoons, Brent. Really? He's got a lot of poise. I don't know how strong his arm is, but I'll tell you, he's accurate, he's poised, he knows exactly what he's doing, extremely well coached. It's first and ten now. Two wideouts for McCoy, off to the right. Brown gets the handoff behind the left side and gets no more than a yard. I can't believe that, Brady Smith. <laughs> he's given away I don't know how many pounds, and he took Anthony Brown that time and stuffed him. Good job, Brady. I bet your defensive line coach likes you. Oregon back into the lead in Eugene by four over Washington. There's the Michigan lead over Illinois. Time has to be running down in that one. And Arizona, a 10-point winner today over UCLA. Now we get a second and nine. 4.09. Utah would hate to take just a field goal lead the way Colorado State has moved that ball the last couple of times they've had it. Now McCoy in trouble. Moves to the right-hand side. Needs to throw it incomplete if he can't find a receiver. Kent throws it down and completes it to Claiborne. Unbelievable. Good. <laughs> Unbelievable. That kid wanted to throw the ball back across the grain. Couldn't see anybody. Still had presence of mind to regain his... And boom, throw a strike right down and right in front of him. Unbelievable. Now, this drive has brought the clock all the way down to the 351 mark as we take another look here with Claiborne, the receiver. See, he wanted to throw left. Now he's forced to run. They got Sean Moran chasing him right there. He sets up. He wants to throw left. It's not there. He turns and throws a right. Completed pass. Beautiful. Now it's third and three. Don't make this, and they'll probably have to kick a field goal over there for the right hash mark. The thing he doesn't want to do is turn it over. He's going to fade it to the corner. Got him. Touchdown, Utah. Curtis Marsh. See, you have Curtis Marsh at six foot two on, on Andre Strode at five foot eight. That's a pretty good call. That's the way to set your game plan. You got a flag down there? Dick, I think that there was an inadvertent flag, and they picked it up. And okay. there's a wonderful scene with the coach and the quarterback. The touchdown stands. But that's good game planning, too. You've got the big, tall guy. Put him on the, a real good corner. Andre Strode is an excellent corner, but he's short. Now here's Danny Pulsifer. He adds the extra point. A lot of time left for the Rams. Remember, this is the whack. <laughs> it ain't over yet. There was the fade. Marsh went and got it in the corner. And that's our difference right now. Introducing the all-new Chevy Blazer, the only sport utility vehicle with a driver control system.
system. It's nice to know it's here. No, my plane's stuck somewhere back here. The flight has been canceled. The five most hated words of every business traveler. On a day like this, I know it's not the airline's fault. Still, I just want somebody to give me some answers. Let's see if we can reroute you from another city. Those are the people I come back to. They try and find a way and give me my best option. Maybe even on another airline. I appreciate that. Because a little honesty goes a long way. Tell Billy by halftime, I'll be there. My dandruff and itch are awful. I'll try anything. Denerex tingles. Head and shoulders doesn't. Both have effective dandruff medicine, but Denerex has something extra that tingles, feels fresh. That's why I started using Denerex. No flakes, no itch. Denerex. In Colorado, gonna tee it up here a little bit. Against Kansas State, Auburn off, and Florida is idle. So Colorado will attempt to make a statement. They play Nebraska next week. There's the second 10. And <laughs> here in Fort Collins, we get word that Michigan just put up a W against Illinois. That one's over in the Big Ten. And we welcome you back to the World League. I mean the whack. It's 38-31, <laughs> but it has been like one of those crazy games of old. McCoy on that go-ahead drive. Incidentally, it was 9-9 nine and nine for 77 yards and the touchdown. This will be down in the end zone. It's coming out of the 20-yard line. And now Colorado State with 346 to work with. The wind has died down. Works a little bit of their advantage. They got the playmaker here, Anthony Hill. There, the offensive coordinator over on the side now sending in the package. Now, up here in the booth, we were talking about a situation that Colorado State could face. If they punch one in, do they go for two with the W or the one for the tie? Now, not so fast, those of you who say you got to win it. Remember, Utah still has a game against Brigham Young. And you got to have a desire to win the whack. So Coach Lubick and his staff hope that they have to make that decision. First and ten now, coming out to the 20-yard line. And off a fake, Hill buys time, fires into coverage, and a very dangerous throw with Kirkman right there. He didn't want to throw it there, but the coverage took away that little play-action pass pattern outside to Olsen. Good coverage that time. And Oregon. Gets him another one, and there's that final we just told you about with Michigan. Winning in Champaign, never an easy place against that defense. Second down and 10. Olsen spread out to the left-hand side. Bernard Karn, the running back. Anthony Hill in trouble steps away on the move penalty flag is down was he past the line I don't think so let's wait and see what the penalty call was I thought he got uh, hooked in the face mask initially as the pass rusher went by him I think that's what happened it's exactly what it is he went back and the rush came from his right side he gets set up he doesn't see he's looking left all the way Actually, right there, it's Bronzel Miller, number 36, that got it from the left side. I thought I saw that, but... Good eyes, coach. Bronzel Miller has been... Uh, you haven't really heard his name much today. Pat Meyer doing a good job over there at that left tackle spot. Three and a half minutes. The Rams with two timeouts left. Largest crowd in the history of Hughes Stadium, and they are still with us, folks. Utah didn't plan to come in here and play any nickel defense either, Brent, so they have linebackers in there and only the four defensive backs. First and ten for Hill and Colorado State. Option look, toss to Karen, Karen at the corner, bounces for about six yards, and it will be second and four, and Jason Hooks covering. Chances are they won't play that same coverage that they just played, Brent, but if they do, and you're sitting up here in the press box, you ought to come down and attack toward the slot wide side of the field. A lot of room to throw the ball when you have that zone spread out that far. Coach David Lay right there. A lot of experience running offenses. Coach Whittingham right there. A lot of experience running defenses. Looks awfully loose down here, Brent. Second down and four, and Hill firing. 
intercepted by Leary, who picked off two in the first half, and he could have had a third one that time. They went to the right spot, coming back over in there. Colorado State with a 10-game winning streak, one of the longest in the country, and here at the top of the hour, we find it in jeopardy because Utah leads it 38-31 with 2.36 to go. This is a third and four. Welcome those of you who've just joined us. I know it is five o'clock here, Rocky Mountain time. Could be a wild ending. Colorado State with the ball. This is a third down. They get the first down. Ward to the 47-yard line and 2.30 to go and Colorado State not finished. Excellent call. Excellent change up right there. Just again, they've had very good success going right at them, straight at them. Good man blocking, quickness play. And I'll tell you, good call. Good call. So Washington loses today. Big win for Rich Brooks at the University of Oregon. Remember, Utah beat University of Oregon. Went into Eugene and won that game. The WAC has done a done some business on the Pac-10 this year. Six and two, I believe they are overall. First and ten now, and Hill is back. Got an open man. He was down on his knees when he caught the ball down at the 40, short of the first down. See so Utah again now staying in their zone coverage is very leery of the man-to-man, -man, which is their basic way that they like to play. They like to play man-to-man -man with the free safety. When they loosen up in these situations, they play the three-deep zone. Going to take a break. Rams use one of their two. 1.56 left. 38-31. Utah. Introducing the all-new Chevy ZR2 Extended Cab. What a celebration there will be tonight at Seabay Pots. That's where the coach has his radio show every week, and it's become one of the big attractions here in the state of Colorado. 1.56 to go now. Second down and three. Anthony Hill going to go deep, going for it. Olsen incomplete. John Saunders, give us an update here, partner. Well, Brent, the Huskies and the Ducks, quite a finish. Ducks up by four. Damon Heward going for the go-ahead touchdown, but Kenny Wheaton picks it off. He's off to the races, down the sideline. One move there, and no one left to beat. 96 yards for the touchdown. The Ducks' first win over the Huskies since 1988. 31-20 is the final. Brent. Oh, uh, what a victory for Coach Brooks here. Third and three, shotgun. Anthony Hill's going to try to create it on the run. That inside shoulder. He was going to try to run for it. He was going to try to take off over there and do it all by himself and then realize nothing doing. He had to throw an incompletion and get it back to the line of scrimmage. That's what he was thinking. And now suddenly it comes down to fourth and three. Dick, my question to you is, how come not come over here and attack the wide side at least once in this I've been looking at that and waiting for him to do that, Brent. But I think that the last play, they were trying to run that inside shuffle play again. And they picked off the inside shuffle man he had one to pitch it to. And so but he I was agree. forced to go outside. He was outside. forced to go out there. So here it is. And that's Ward stepping out. There's no one lined up on the outside guy. They Get it. There he is. There he is. tripping he tripped him and got away with it Ron, I saw that Brent they didn't line up every once in a while you see that they got him the ball almost too late but he breaks it you see him right here no one lined up on him he's look at the linebacker he's saying hey get over there get over there so they get him the ball quickly good heads up play now Warren Harrison number 24 tripping right here to the right side of your screen see him right there that's a penalty so they get 16 on fourth and three. Now it is first and 10. The ball is inside the Utah 25. 122 and one timeout working now. Hill takes off to the left side. Hill's going to run it out of bounds and stop the clock. And this will leave it second and 11 now at the 114 mark. They're too left-handed in this whole thing, Brent. But they got to get down here to the wide side of the field with the football. It's just more room to defense down here at this end. Now Harrison comes in and Hooks Boy, comes you know, back out. But you mentioned though, you know, he, he almost looks like he prefers working to his left. Yeah, he he just seems more comfortable when he's throwing left and working left. Yeah. Out in that direction, and, mm -hmm. and you know, if it is a comfort zone that the coaches are aware of, you really want to put him in that. I mean, you mm -hmm. can't 
criticize that, but now they give him Burkett over here in the slot. But now he's right got the single side. coverage up on top. And he's got Phillips, so he's got man-on-man -to, -man to the left side now. At 115, he's going to go back to it. He's got it. Olsen, first down, out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Sitting up here, if you've got an experienced quarterback and you can read coverages, and that's just what he did that time, they rolled the coverage over to the strong side this time, and he goes over against the single coverage. Excellent job. There's our situation. The Rams trail it by seven. Olsen with eight catches for 118 yards and one touchdown. Four wide receivers. Ward is the running back. And their zone coverage down at the bottom here again, Brent, a lot of room to the right side. They'll run Ward. Ward slips a tackle. Utah goes after it. Oh. And Colorado State dodges a bullet. Oh. They use their last timeout. 56 seconds. So it was Big Rogowski there who was able to recover the fumble. It was coming loose from Ward, and Rogowski saves the day. We'll be right back. People tell us we beat up. So the other unbeaten in Colorado, big one, Nebraska. That starts our doubleheader next Saturday on ABC. Then your doubleheader games. We'll see the list of teams, regional coverage. All your cable operators ask for pay-per-view. We want to show you the moment for Big Rogowski because he saved it as Colorado State dodges the bullet. Here's the ball coming free. Now as 77 kind of turns into your screen there, and you will watch him. He goes down and pounces on the loose football. Now they come up. Second and eight. The ball is at the 10-yard line. Anthony Hill, he's an eligible receiver if they elect to use him as one. Off a of fake end zone. Olsen grabs it out of bounds. Incomplete. 51 seconds. Garrett with the coverage. <laughs> They just tried to lay it up at the back corner of the end zone. Good job there. Darn, there came down with it anyway, and he was still in bounds. Couldn't get both hands on the ball. Dick, if I'm going to use the third down, the throwback, here it is. If I'm going to use a little trickery on the third down play with eight to go, this would be the time. The wide side to the right is all open. Come down to fourth down at the 44-second mark. I still think, Brent, they ought to be attacking the wide field zone. The shorter side of the field is easier to defense for the defender. There's just, you know, less space. They've got them spread out all the way over here. They're going to cover two. Cover two normally means double zone. I kind of doubt you'd see that there, so it probably means something else. Here it comes, fourth down. Hill rolling to his left. Hill fires, intercepted. Utah picks it off, Harold Lusk with the interception running free, and Lusk can go the distance. Midfield, he'll score, they won't touch him. Utah is going to win and stay unbeaten. return for a touchdown on fourth down the Utes have come into Fort Collins and they've done it the defense
defense picked off two passes for touchdowns today, and here is the second one, Dick. Yeah, I'll tell you, when you're rolling to your left and throwing back across your body like that, it's hard to see what everybody else is doing on defense. And Mr. Lust saw what to do. He picks it off and runs it all the way back. Here he was, a quarterback halfway through the season last year. They moved him back to the safety position. He says he'd rather be a quarterback, but I think right now he's glad he's a safety. Well, a little bit earlier today, that was not the same. Those two were not hugging and embracing. <laughs> a stunner for the young men from Colorado State who have given everything and even more this year. They've just broken down too many times in the kicking game, Brent. Field goals blocked, you know, punt blocked. They allowed them to play on the short field. Really, I think they've really, uh, from terms of just play football, they've probably the better team. Utah adds the extra point. I can't go to New York this weekend. What? I, I, I told you I had to work this weekend. Yeah, no, but I thought you could put this stuff off till Monday. This stuff? This stuff is my job. Well, but Susan called me, and there's this big conference in New York. Oh, oh I see. So you just assumed I would drop whatever I was doing and come along because what you do is so much more important. 